Tonight, we're playing one of my favorite Morph Borg hacks. Uh, this is a uh, game put out by Limithron. We've featured it on the show during the Kickstarter. It was one of the most successful Morph Borg titles on Kickstarter. Uh, it was the most successful at that time, but uh, it's quickly been uh, uh, surpassed by a couple other projects. But this is put out by Limithron and really publishing. It's Pirate Borg. It's Morph Borg with a pirate coding on it, and we're excited to play it tonight. So I've got an awesome cast, so stick around. We're playing Pirate Borg Buried in the Bahamas uh, with uh, an awesome crew. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. My name is Doug. Today on the show, we're playing Pirate Borg from Limithron and Freely Publishing. This hit retail earlier this month, and uh, it's been selling like hotcakes. Uh, I'm going to remind folks that uh, if you are interested in picking this game up, you can get it through Freely Publishing's website, or you can friend, ask your friendly local game store to bring it in. It is in distribution. And if you are a fan of Pirate Borg, please hit that like button down below and uh, subscribe, all that stuff I'm supposed to do here. But uh, we really appreciate it. We're, we're super, super supportive of uh, everything that uh, the guys at Limithron are doing. Uh, love to see Luke and Tyler just kind of uh, build this, uh, this kind of side project that they were working on into something that uh, they're really, really passionate about. So uh, tonight we've got a great cast with you, with us. And uh, I think I'm just going to bring him on, and we'll get started. Uh, of course, tonight's Harbor Master is the one and only Jason Hunt. Jason, Yarr. thanks for being our, our Harbor Master tonight. <laughs> My pleasure, man. I've been looking forward to this. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, and then making their VCG debuts. Look at this. Not one, not two, but three debuts. <laughs> Everybody welcome janet mark and michelle thanks everybody for coming on and, and playing pirate borg Looking are, are we excited me Absolutely. Arr. Arr. so let's before we dive in uh let's talk a little bit about uh about janet and mark what they do because we have them on as a special guest and we, you'll probably see them here you know occasionally on the show but Janet and Mark have their own company with the ta in the tabletop industry, and they do Dirty Woods, which if you uh, are have been a Patreon supporter of this show, you might have gotten a, a nice dice box with our, with uh, Dirty Woods on it, uh, in it, and uh, you also do some licensed uh, dice vaults and, and all that uh, for folks. Uh, you want to tell, tell folks a little bit about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we make in-house, like everything is done, just the two of us, uh, hardwood, uh, uh, regional hardwood dice boxes and rolling towers. Um, and they're all resin inlaid, and our resin wizard does her magic. I can't see her, the wood wizard, in public, so <laughs> that doesn't work. But. Wow, already like three minutes in, and I've got to remind Janet that this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> Domestic hardwoods, sir. <laughs> you all do some great products. I, I love. It. Look at that. Let's let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah. That so Pirateborg uh, dice board. Pirate That's Borg. awesome. If you, if you have the limited edition Pirateborg book, this is the logo done by nice. Luke Stratton himself. If you would like one, they are available, made to order on our DirtyWoods.net website. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very lined, cool. Lined in velvet. So I don't know and if we told you, Doug, like how it started, but six, seven years ago. Something like that, yeah. We went to Gen Con. Mark bought some metal dice, and they were chewing up his other dice in his bag. So he made himself a box and then another box. Then he was like, I'm just going to make a few more boxes. And now um, our garage, dining room table, and office, and every flat surface in the house <laughs> is used to make Boxes. It's definitely taken over. So if anybody's going to Game Hole Con, you will be able to see the boxes, pick them up, touch them. Um, it's just, it's fun. We have a lot of fun with it, with the community. Well, you do a great job. And uh, I knew that right away that, uh, that uh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Jason's got, Jason, hold that up for the camera one more time. For those that are listening to the audio podcast, you get 
They're yeah. missing out, but uh, they did a special Pirate Borg logo dice vault too. This is, yeah, awesome. this thing is awesome. I love it. it is, uh, next, next to my VCG vault that I already have from from uh, the, the shoot crates from Doug from from about four. That's my favorite thing that I've got right now for dice. Very cool. Well, I I, I love uh, what you're doing, and uh, I think it's some of the it's not only some really great dice accessories and tabletop accessories, but they're handmade pieces of art. And I think that that's, uh, that's really part and, you know, important for folks that are looking to pick these up and uh, also the, the reasonably priced. I mean, you look at the, you look at a lot of this stuff on the market and it's, you know, well over what y'all are pricing it at. So uh, if anybody's interested in picking up any of this stuff, I tell you to go to dirtywoods.net and check out the web store. So, all right, uh, let's, uh, get started. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to hand the uh, show over to uh, Jason. I'm going to just compact it into this little ball right here and then throw it over. Oh, it's Jason, this is American football. I don't know if you're familiar with American football, but we don't use um, our feet. So you have really, oh, I'm going to get Janet going. You have smaller balls. See, it's not I'm gonna th- I'm it's... gonna throw it over your way. Go ahead and catch it. <laughs> it's an easy I'm catch. Really yeah. <laughs> that's that's the joke between American and Canadian football. They have bigger balls. Six minutes in, in, six minutes in, two warnings already on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't fine? have Janet feeling like out of place. That's what I appreciate it's about you. <laughs> All right, so Pirate Borg. Um, as Doug said. Uh, Rules light, scurvy ridden, piratey RPG for anybody who's not familiar with it. Really easy to play. Rules light, Mork Borg system. Um, it's a D20 rollover system. Common difficulty is 12. You roll your D20, you add whatever stat I ask you to add to it, and if you get more than the target number, you win. That is basically it for the rules for Mork Borg. Each character will have individual little doodads and whatnot, so it's it's that modify that, but they're all very simple, very straightforward. You're not going to get buried in rules with this game. It's all about having fun being a pirate. Now, I think, I think, so I've played Pirate Borg. Mark and Janet, you've played Pirate Borg as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, we played once. Michelle, this is, we're going to put Michelle on the spot. Michelle has never played Pirate Borg, so I'm so excited for Michelle, and this is, this is, this is going to be so awesome. So everybody give it up for Michelle in the comments uh, as she does some epic things on stream. <laughs> no pressure, though. Exciting. No pressure, No pressure though. No pressure. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. A little pressure. No. If we don't deliver, we'll talk about this after. Yeah. <laughs> in the group chat, we'll, we'll be expect like, that what, what, from what? you. <laughs> uh, all right. Jason, okay. take it away. If you want to uh, get, uh, yeah. It's all, all right. yours, my So, friend. all of you are currently crew aboard a ship called the Tarantula. Um, it's a sloop that has been sailing in the Bahamas for approximately three weeks now. You've been going back and forth, island hopping, island hopping. The captain uh, is a tyrannical disaster named Captain Bloodwhip, as one might expect by the name. He has basically been driving you all like dogs for the last three weeks in desperate search for something. He won't tell anybody what. He just keeps... You arrive at an island, you circle the island. He says, no, this isn't where we need to be. Carry on, next island kind of thing. And the um, the first mate, uh, whose name is Skaggs, uh, which uh, Doug will provide you with a little artistical drawing of in a moment. Yeah, I'm totally Uh, honest. He's basically been the taskmaster for all of you. Um, he's, um, He's a harsh man, but he's a fair man. So most of you have been getting along fairly well with him. Uh, he's very gruff, uh, very big on the captain and following his orders. He's been with him for quite some time now, but he's, even he is starting to have his doubts about this uh, whole endeavor. And it starts to come to a head actually in the evening, uh, as the sun has already set, the waves have picked up, the wind has picked up. There's crashing waves starting to come in all over the boat. They're like 20, 30, 40 feet tall. At some point you can't, at some point you can't even see past the waves to see the ocean itself. Uh, huge storm clouds overhead, lightning crashing all around the ship. And um, the, basically, you're in real danger of capsizing the vessel right now. You have no idea where you are. You've completely lost sight of any land. Um, and through one great big peal of lightning, 
you see almost broadside next to you a massive blackened ship of bone. It looks like it's been lit on fire. Um, it's charred almost to ruin. There's three massive skulls on the back of it, all just belching huge gouts of flame. It's the only reason you can really see the ship. And it is bearing down on you bow first. And it crashes right into the port side of the ship. And in the moment when you're all scattered across the deck, you hear great thumping loud noises as skeletons land amongst you on the deck of the ship. They're all charred black. They are, they, it's possible they're even covered in pitch. And then with one great big booming crack, the deck itself gives way partially as this massive blackened skeletal ogre lands amidst the rest of the skeletons. There's 10 or 12 of them, and they all start scattering along the deck and engaging the crew. During one of the other lightning flashes, you'll see on the forecastle, Captain Bloodwhip is already engaged with skeletons, with his fellow crewmen all around you. The crew have grabbed weapons and are starting to try to repel the boarders, and the fight is basically on. So I need everybody to roll initiative. That's a D6 plus your agility. Right at the gate. Great way to ease this in. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. <laughs> Two for Doug. Nine. Seven, got a nine? Holy smoke. Seven, seven, seven. Three. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. All right. So, Captain Jay, who technically isn't a captain at this particular point in time, it is your go. I would just like <laughs> you to know I always travel with my own skiff. Therefore, whoever ship I'm on, I am still always a captain of my own ship. You are indeed the captain of your skiff, yes. <laughs> yes. Um... Do we want to do like a player introduction as we go? To, We're going each, to do that uh, shortly. Yeah. All right. All right. So am I on deck when this happens? Everyone is on deck. A skeleton is approaching you across the deck with its cutlass raised. Um, basically, you know, cinematic view, camera pans around you and a skeleton just walking into frame kind of thing. So give us a little bit of a description of Captain J and we'll get into the fight. Okay. All right. So Captain J, um, again works on many ships, but always travels with her own skiff. So I am always my own captain. I might be known as a little bit paranoid as fungus. So no, no bad words on Doug's channel. Um, and I am known for never blinking. I will beat you in any steering contest. Got a little paranoia, so I don't blink a lot. And I'm short, spunky, and I carry a lot of knives. All right. All right. So I would like to attempt to stab the closest skeleton to me in the neck. All right. All right. Make your roll. Difficulty 12. I, I didn't make that. That would be a, a one with a negative one. Did you roll a one? I rolled a one. Okay. You have just critically fumbled. This D20. Um, yeah, actually, um, roll, uh, uh, oh, okay then. Overboard with the D20. <laughs> we lost the plane. All right, so um, you have a choice now. You can use one point of your devil's luck to retain your weapon if you like, or uh, you're going to roll on the fumble table, which basically means you're going to drop your weapon. I'm going to use one of my two points of devil's luck All right. to re-roll. Okay, so very quickly um, for uh, Michelle, just because we've never done this before, uh, your Devil's Luck is um, a one-time use point system that allows you to, you can either re-roll a dice, you can force an enemy to re-roll a dice, you can reduce the difficulty of a task by up to four, uh, you can negate uh, crit fumbles, and, and that basically that's, it's your, it's your saving Hail Mary kind of thing. Anyway. Um, you very narrowly avoid dropping your weapon. The skeleton lunges back at you. Um, you Are you going to try and soak the damage, or are you going to try and dodge? I'm going to try and dodge. Okay. Roll me your agility. Difficulty 12. 15. Good. You dodge easily. The skeleton lunges at you, and it's, you can hear it chattering. And you can see bits of it starting to flake off as it tries to attack you as well. Uh, it's very clearly been burned and charred, and you don't know what happened to the ship, but it is a blackened disaster. 
Um, and after that, we go to, uh, I believe it was uh, Old Gunpowder with a seven. Yes, it was a seven. Yes. Um, so is it just the one skeleton or are there more? No, by? there are 12 skeletons on the main deck with you right now. Are they grouped and the up? Skele- in- there's, and there is this massive skeleton ogre that has landed near the mast. It's not currently in range to take a swing at anybody yet. It's a solid 12 feet tall, massive pile of bones. And you can see this glowing blue core of energy behind its rib cage. That makes it look absolutely terrifying. Okay. Well, to, so I'm going to start with the description here since we're going around and doing character yep. descriptions. Uh, so Frederick Old Gunpowder Archer, um, completely covered in tattoos to an obscene amount, uh, wearing tattered rags, surprisingly, although they are very singed due to his uh, penchant for using gunpowder and grenades. Um, also wears a dark cloak um, and a bandolier, which is where he carries his grenades and, and sundry items that he carries with him and a boarding axe. Um, is known for being impulsive, which doesn't go very well with grenades, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and is, has been known to be very murderous grump when he's hungry. Also doesn't go well with grenades. Uh, so Frederick, uh, old gunpowder, would, uh, would like to look for an area where there's a grouping of skeletons that are that just boarded, maybe not near any other of our crew members. Well, there are several of them that are clustered together. They're a little bit in amongst the crew, but you can do your best to try and land the shot. I know what you're going to do, so <laughs> <laughs> you can do your best if you want to. All right, I'm so... going to make it difficult. I'm going to make it difficulty 14 for you, though. Uh, d- if you can roll that, then guaranteed. If not, good chance you're going to catch some of the crew. Well, I'm impulsive, so we're going to go ahead and throw this iron grenade. Um, first, there it is. And I roll my. Holy crap, that's a nat 20. That's a nat 20. All right. Okay. So you make a perfectly timed toss. So you're going to catch three of the skeletons. So roll your damage for your grenade. Okay. And I apologize because I don't have my note sheet. So I have to look up the the iron grenade real quick. Um, I believe it was 3d6. I believe you're right. We're going to go with that. So we don't delay. Uh, 10. All right. The grenade goes off with a thunderous boom. It blows a massive hole in the deck itself. Takes three skeletons completely with it. Narrowly misses dozens of the crew members. Everyone is startled except for the other skeletons. Even Captain Bloodwhip. You see him look down from the forecastle and he's like, What are you doing to me, ship? Thunder! Yeah, basically, this booming echo basically deafens everybody for a moment and absolutely destroys three of the skeletons, but there is a massive hole leading down into the lower level of the ship now in the deck. And with that uh, dramatic opening, we will (laughs) move on to uh, TaskRabbit. So introduce your character, and then you may choose what you want to do. Okay, yeah. So my character is uh, um, likes to have fun, always trying to trick my crewmates, and also pretty lazy just in general. Um, she is wears fancy clothes, always looks amazing, and. Um, yeah, my weapon is a marlin spike. Uh, nice. Michelle, you were supposed to create a character, not play Doug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've, you've got a few skeletons you can choose from uh, if you want to take an attack or if you want to just try and defend yourself or... I think you're playing a sorcerer, are you not? Yeah, I'm a sorcerer. Also. Yes, so you That's also have the I, option to use your spell if you would like. I do want to do that. I want to put the. I want to summon a ghost to watch over the souls of my allies. Okay, so you can summon uh, because it's level one. You can protect one of your allies at the moment. So you need to pick which of your allies oh. you would like to protect. Oh no! At higher levels, you can do more. Okay. We'll protect uh, Captain J. All right. 
All right, so that is that uses your action for the round. Um, and we will jump along to uh, Beardy Doug. Who are you and what you doing? So I'm I'm be- I'm playing Beardy tonight. Um, that's what everybody on the crew calls me because my real name is Frederick, but nobody knows that because I just happened to like stumble on the ship one day when they were in port, and I'm just a big brute of a man and i've got a big long beard and i basically look like a crazy 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 person that probably hasn't lived in a house for quite some time and uh yeah i basically just uh i uh i'm very uh very odd i talk to my weapon which is this meat cleaver and i call it kevin and kevin and i have conversations all right then Kevin and I are best friends. Nobody touches Kevin. And Kevin Kevin is just caked with layers of blood from, you know, other friends that he's made. Right, Kevin? Kevin? Also, also doesn't bathe. <laughs> Kevin. And so, and so because of which, you know, one day I just climbed aboard the ship while it was on port and just sat down and uh, nobody really wanted to tell me to leave. So uh, <laughs> I'm... Very t- and tattered, raggy clothes, and uh, I also wear a, a metal-lined hat. Is it made of tinfoil? Just, so just, I, <laughs> just so that you know. Yes. So Kevin and I can keep our conversations to ourselves. Okay. <laughs> what would you and Kevin like to do right now? I would like to look at Kevin and say, Kevin, looks like we've got some new friends to meet and I will then try to uh, swing Kevin uh, at the nearest person at the nearest skeleton at the nearest skeleton. Okay. Uh, difficulty yeah. 12 or no, sorry. Difficulty 10 for you because that is your preferred weapon. Yes. And uh, let's see what I do. That's a 19 right there. There you go. A solid hit. Roll me your damage. All right. So Kevin, if I ever roll one with Kevin, he actually poisons. I spread the disease of, of one of my prior victims or one of Kevin's prior friends to the. Yeah, and I rolled a one. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, it's unfortunate. That you I did not. I did not. Skeleton. I know, but I'm just saying <laughs> if it weren't a skeleton, that would have been a much more epic. Yeah, I did right, one so point you, of damage to the to the skeleton. You bring your cleaver down, and it cracks across the skeleton's rib cage, and chunks of the bone, charred bone, fly off of it. And that is taking us to the enemy. So the the same skeleton that you just tried to chunk a hole through is going to attack you back. And he misses wildly and swings, and actually stumbles past you on the rolling deck a bit. <laughs> and, Kevin. <laughs> and. Two of the other skeletons are going to engage with other crew members, and the remaining two skeletons are going to rush towards... Uh, let's see. Let's roll it, actually. One of them is going to come at Captain J. The other one is going to go at... Oh, also at Captain J. They don't like you very much, What Captain did I J. do? Well, you have this really cool spiritual protector going on right now that you can see, actually. It's, just, it's sort of just hovering nearby kind of thing, just sort of phasing in and out of existence. It's this got this like fluorescent blue kind of look to it. It's dressed about as well as Task Rabbit is, so it looks fabulous. And it's just like for some reason it seems to be drawing the skeletons to you. So one of them is gonna swing and it's gonna throw its cutlass directly over your head over the board over the side of the ship into the water. And the second one misses wildly. And at the end of the skeleton's turn, the skeleton ogre is going to step in. And it is going to either attack you or a random crew member. So we'll see. It's going to be a random crew member. It has a massive spiked club. It's full of gigantic nails. And he rolled a nat 20 on this poor guy. So one of the crew members is literally just absolutely flattened to the deck. The the cudgel, basically, when it hits the deck, also rips up deck planking everywhere. Even its steps as it moves across the deck is causing great big cracks because this thing is just so massive and heavy. And from on high, you hear um, from the crow's nest, there's another crew member named Billy Knives. He's the youngest man on the crew. He's super tall, super skinny. 
He's usually relegated to the crappiest jobs you can imagine. He's in the crow's nest looking around, and you hear him shout down, Captain, the ship's starting to cave! And you can feel it underneath your feet. You can feel the, the hull of the ship is starting to flex, and it's not supposed to do that. So it's taken enough damage that it's practically catastrophic at this point. But we're not there yet. Um, and that ends their turn. Uh, the skeleton ogre is com- is just basically wrenching its cudgel back out of the deck, ripping up even more deck planking and turning and looking for another thing to squish with it. And that takes us back to the top of the turn order. So we go back to Captain J. All right. Well, Billy's my buddy. And when he calls stuff out, I pay attention. So do I see anything like an ore, a piece of lumber, something that I think that is big enough to swing at that overlooking skeleton. Oh, for sure. There's lots of broken planking and whatnot across the deck. Yeah, right now. So I want to grab yeah. that and just see if there's a way that I can just like knock this guy over. Sure. You can give it a try. Yep. Yeah. Um, he's huge. So your difficulty to hit him is actually only going to be an eight. He is a super easy target because he's not fast moving. 17. All right. I will roll his agility and see how he does. Oops. He fails his agility. So you hit him and the plank actually wedges in between his feet and he tries to take a step towards you. Similar to what happens when you stick a bike in the spokes of a tire as someone's pedaling. He takes one step forward. The board locks up in his feet. He goes down like a sack of cannonballs for lack of a better term because he's so large. But he hits the deck and punches right through the deck into the hold below and you hear a resounding splash as he punches right through the bottom of the boat as well. I would like to take that opportunity to look on the side of the ship to see if my skiff is still there. Your skiff is, the rope is still there, and the rest of the skiff is basically kindling. It's been smashed on the side of the boat. Dang it. Unfortunately. Okay. All right, so that is your turn. Um, And then we move on to Old Gunpowder. All right. Um... Are there still skeletons boarding our ship from the big black? Not, ship? No, not from the other ship at this point. Uh, not that you can see anyway. It is extremely dark and the waves are crashing around everywhere. So it would be very tough for you to really, I mean, get a bead on that. All right. So far, you still have two skeletons on the deck with you, uh, actively looking for opponents. And mm-hmm. Captain Bloodwhip is still on the forecastle fighting with some of the other crew. Oh, I will take my... Um, <clears throat> boarding axe and just take a swing at one of the nearby skeletons as I'm edging myself nearer where I can board the other ship that is not sinking. Okay. Difficulty 12. All right. So 15. All right. That's it. Roll me your damage. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. All right, D6. Three damage. All right. Your axe catches in a couple of the ribs on the skeleton, and when you pull it back, it cracks them right off, leaving a large hole in its chest. It looks like it's about to fall over, but it's not quite there just yet. And that takes us over to Task Rabbit. Yeah, I would like to try and get off of this ship and get onto the other ship. All right. Um, you're going to have to make me agility. Uh, we're going to call it 14 because of the slippery deck and their crappy conditions. So D20, right? Yep, D20 and whatever agility bonus you have. <laughs> Zero. 17. All right. So you grab onto one of the one of the ropes that's actually dangling off the ship. You start hauling yourself up onto the onto the other side of the boat and the rope gives way just as you're getting towards the edge of the the edge of the rail on the other ship uh and you plummet back down onto the deck and land in a pile of rigging you don't take any damage but you can't quite get you can't make it up onto the other deck it's it's about 20 feet higher than you because your ship is substantially smaller uh than than the uh than the enemy ship but you have very nearly succeeded uh and that moves us on to beardy uh beardy is going to uh look around for a barrel is there a barrel anywhere there's a few loose barrels rolling around in the deck yeah can i go over i'm gonna like lumber over with kevin like kevin we're gonna be our own captain now and i'm gonna pick up a barrel and jump over the side of the boat with the (laughs) 
with the barrel. <laughs> okay. I'm not even going to make a test for that. So all of the rest of you, you see Kevin and, and Beardy lumber over, grab this honking big barrel from the side of the thing, something that none of you could possibly lift on your own. It's This thing is massive. It's got to be full of ale or rum or something. And he just pitches himself over the side of the boat unceremoniously into the into the waves can we like are we close enough to see over the side of the boat if he like turns if he's turning over and over <laughs> with it or, like, <laughs> no <laughs> i can see him right uh well you might be able to because you were next you were trying to climb under the other ship so you were closer to the railing he's he's he hits the water like a sack of potatoes and the barrel you can see the barrel cracking underneath him just because of the impact with the water um so he's he's <laughs> he's kind of holding on to like the the individual spines of the barrel uh, trying to trying to keep it like so that he's got enough to float on sort of thing and he, but he's, he's he's hampered actually because he won't give up kevin so you know he's holding a machete in one hand or a meat cleaver sorry in one hand and trying trying to trying to desperately grasp the staves of this barrel that are like basically falling apart under him all right, uh, so that takes us back to the skeletons again. Um, you hear Billy Knives is is just freaking out in, in the crow's nest. He's he's actually halfway out of the crow's nest. He's about to dive off into the ocean himself because he can he can see the 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 tarantula is starting to keel, which means basically the boat is starting to snap in two. Um, two of the skeletons that are on the deck go rushing towards uh, old gunpowder this time. Uh, one of them rolls at 12 to hit you. That's going to be one point of damage. Do you have armor? I do not. Rags. You don't have armor? All right. So you Light. can choose to dodge if you want to sacrifice your next turn. Um, if I sacrifice my action, does it also sacrifice my movement? Uh, yes. That movement and action are basically one and the same. One and the same. All right. It's I'm going to go you ahead can. and soak the point okay so it rakes its uh, cutlass across your chest and it kind of snags up in the rags a bit it look, should have been a much more grievous wound but the dirty rags that you're wearing kind of foul it up a bit and it just kind of slices across your lower ribs or whatever you start you can feel a little bit of wet warm warmth on your side knowing that you've been cut a bit but otherwise you're unharmed and the other one is going after captain j still targeted and i rolled a 13 uh would you like to roll the damage or would i like to roll the damage that's up to you you want to roll the d6 you can roll uh -huh. the damage okay unless it's a six <laughs> well, well i can't say that in okay <laughs> so it does one point of damage to you but <laughs> you, you fortunately have a spiritual protector right now that gives you minus d2 a protection for one hour as if you're wearing an extra piece of armor so this ghostly spirit, this super well-dressed ghostly spirit kind of just drifts into the path of the blow and it sticks into the ectoplasmic form of the spirit and fouls up the entire attack and this form drifts off of you. Like it's kind of passing in and out and around and through you. It probably feels disgusting, but you take no damage. And that means the ogre is done. All right, so uh, top of the third round, you can see Billy, Billy Knives, dives out of the crow's nest into the water. Um, Skaggs is ushering the captain down from the forecastle, uh, and part of the forecastle actually literally gives way as well. And you see a f oh, just a torrent of planks and splinters and shattered ship parts and whatnot as the, uh, the other ship is starting to pull back away from you now, uh, and it's literally ripping the guts out of the ship as it goes. So you, there's no chance the ship is staying afloat right now. Um, and let's see, that's that, 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 that's done. Okay, so we go back to the top of the initiative order again. So that's Captain Jay's turn. All right, so here's my question. The distance between myself, the side of the ship, the space between our side of the ship and Beardy and the other ship, how, how many feet are we talking here? Um, well, since the ship is starting to pull away from you now, probably 60 feet. Where's Beardy at in relation to the side of this ship? He's yeah. somewhere in the water. You'd have to go to the railing and search for him for your entire turn if you really wanted to pick him out. This, it's, it's 
completely pitch black outside. So the only light you have right now is a couple of failing lanterns on the ship and the occasional flash of lightning from the storm. Okay, so I would like to leave it to luck. I would like to jump up on the side of our ship, take the briefest glance as I inhale, and hope that I'm able to jump and land on Beardy. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to call that an agility test, obviously. Um, we'll call it difficulty 16. If you can make a 16, you miraculously land on top of Beardy. God damn it, I just missed it. 15. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh darn it. I just missed it. <laughs> All right. So Beardy, you're in the water. You're, you're trying to make a little makeshift raft out of your broken barrel and you hear this huge splash right next to you and you see Captain Jay just shoots into the water next to you. Uh, also followed by this ghostly spirit who's diving in right next to her. <laughs> uh, no, Wesley, no one here has dark vision. <laughs> none none of them are. Dark vision. Uh, well, do you? Is it on your sheet? I mean, I could write it in real quick. No, don't you write it on your sheet right now. That's not fair. <laughs> okay, so that's Captain Jay's turn, so we'll go to Old Gunpowder next. So right. your crewmates are abandoning ship at an alarming rate, Old Gunpowder. <laughs> so there's there's no way to jump to the other ship, the ghost ship. Uh, no, not at this point. It's pulled back too far. Um, uh, superhuman feats of skill notwithstanding, right. you would need a, some sort of rocket propulsion to get yourself over to that ship. All right. So, anything on that's left on the deck near where I'm am, where I am, that will also float in water. There are lots of boxes uh, and quite a few long planks that might serve. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a box. Okay. I'll grab a box and jump in the water, hoping that the box will help keep me afloat. All right. In case something goes All crazy. Right. So you go overboard into the water. Yes. And we move on to Task Rabbit. You are the only person on board deck right now that isn't a fleeing crew member right now. <laughs> so you have an important decision to make. <laughs> where did I where, where did I land when I when I jumped the last time? You're on the you're right next to the railing. There's you actually landed in a pile of coiled rope that, that was used for boarding and other tasks, sail rigging and that sort of thing. Okay. Is there anything below deck? Such a, like, uh, for, uh, um, I want to go, I, I have lots a of torch. Cargo. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, light one of my torches and go below deck and see if there's anything uh, larger I could use as a vessel. Okay. Um, it takes you most of your turn really to get the torch lit in the rain just because it's so difficult to light that. It finally does sputter to life um, and you duck below deck. Actually, there's enough holes in the deck and the ship is starting to crack apart that it's easy to get down there. Um, there's a lot of bolstered cotton um, and other textiles and stuff that were basically uh, wrapped in rope and whatnot that were you were going to sell off at the next port. Um, that's probably the most buoyant thing down there. There's quite a few barrels of rum. There's lots of cannonballs. There's the powder reserve, none of which is very useful to you right now. Save the rum. Save the rum. <laughs> <laughs> Save the rum. Oh. You can see actually that the black skeleton ogre has not actually fallen completely through the ship. It's, you can oh. see one of, one of its hands is gripping the bottom of the hull. Um, it hasn't managed to hoist itself back into the ship, but you can see the blue glow from its uh, from its spiritual essence in its chest, b just beneath the water. So it's kind of it's actually lightening the little bit of the cargo hold around the hole. I have no idea what to do. Um, well, you only you can save the rum once. <laughs> You could save the rum, or you could try a, uh, a bale of cotton. Uh, it is cotton is somewhat buoyant until it gets soaked with water. Exactly. Like, what's it going to do in the water? Well, it is. It's. It is. It's wrapped in canvas, so you never know. Maybe it'll stay buoyant. I have. I have. I have zero confidence in in the textiles and the cotton. Especially <laughs> <laughs> when the is like. Maybe it'll. Stay yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, oh, maybe. I'm, like, I'm not going to give you guarantees. That's part of the fun. <laughs> I, I put more faith in a in a barrel of rum. 
So okay, try to escape with the barrel of rum. All right, so you roll a barrel of rum over to one of the holes in the side of the ship, as far away from the ogre as you can possibly be, and pitch it through the side and dive in on top of it. And fortunately, you are not a gigantic monster of a creature like Beardy, so you easily are able to hang on to this barrel, and you start bobbing away from the edge of the ship. Um, you see other crew members flailing around in the water, grabbing to whatever materials they can to stay afloat. And the, you can see the, the triple skulled flame stacks on the back of the black skeleton ship are pulling back further away into the distance. And with a final crack of lightning, you see the tarantula completely just broken. Its spine is completely uh, destroyed and it's just sinking like a stone now from all the cargo weight and stuff inside it. And that is the last that you remember from that evening, actually. Um, it basically it just, we're going to fade to black on this because you're all just desperately trying to stay alive in the water. And we're going to move ahead to the next morning where you all wash up on the shore of an island. And you're all soaking wet. You're exhausted from the night. But it's dawn. You're on an island. You're alive. There's Skaggs made it. Um, Billy Knives has made it with you. There's a handful of other crew, five in total, that are with you on the island. And you're all just desperately dragging each other out of the surf and whatnot, uh, trying to recover yourselves. And we'll, we'll pick up there. The combat is now over, obviously. I'd like to focus on dragging the rum cask onto <laughs> the beach. Okay. Saving the rum, priority one. <laughs> I feel like uh, as I wash up on, on shore, as I come to, it's like me curled up on my side with Kevin like next to me. And I'm just like... <laughs> Wait, resting, do you like, recognize Kevin? Because Kevin's been in the ocean all night. Is Kevin clean now? Uh, you know what? You know what? You, would, you wouldn't deliberately clean Kevin. No. Um, give me an agility test. Difficulty 10. eight so you notice while you're curled up with kevin that a few bits and pieces of his caked on mess have come loose in the storm oh. he's still mostly gross kevin kevin, kevin you're, you're falling apart you don't look as nice as you used to <laughs> oh. So um, and Skaggs is on shore with everybody else as well. Um, and he's barking orders at the remaining crew because he was the first mate. So he's basically assumed command of the, of the beach crew here. Um, he's already got them hauling stuff out of the surf and that sort of thing, but nothing beyond that. Can, can I go over to, uh, you said it was Skaggs that was the first mate? Yes. Yeah. Skaggs is the first mate. All right. I'm going to say like, Skaggs, Skaggs, you not captain. Captain J is captain. Skaggs will look over at Captain J and be like, she's not even got a boat. What are you talking about? There's no way that person's a captain of anything. Um, That's I'm Captain J. Where's your boat, Skaggs? My boat was the tarantula after the captain died. And oh. he actually, um, he has a... Um, um, a map in his hand. You can see it while curled up piece of parchment. And he's like, he gave this to me as he died. He told me that we needed to find this. That this was the reason why we were out here. Hey, hey, what's what's that on the map right there? He looks. What and then I, I would like to grab the map and attempt to throw it to task grab it. <laughs> okay. Um, give me an agility test. Difficulty 12. Dirty 20. All right. You easily snatch the thing because he's literally, he's that gullible. He is sitting there. He's looking at, he actually opens his hand to look at them because he's thinking there's something that he's missed. You snatch it out of his hands, fling it easily across the sand, and it lands right next to TaskRabbit. I'm like, oh, no boat, no map, no Captain Skaggs. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, he just stomps off, honestly. Like he's 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 basically a broken man at this point. He just he's like, "All right, I've had enough of you guys. I'm I'm out of here. I'm leaving you." Uh, and he starts stomping off. Um, you're on a relatively small coastline. Uh, it's a pretty. It's I wouldn't say it's a spit of land, but it's not very large. Um, you can see there's a single hill dominating most of it. It's all just low scrub brush all around, as far as you can see. Um, the shoreline is absolutely covered in wreckage of the tarantula. 
and a few bits and pieces of the black ship, but it's mostly just brittle bones and that sort of thing. Nothing to look at there. Uh, so he just starts stomping off towards the uh, towards the top of the hill at the top of the island. And you can see, though, there's a couple of not natural-looking posts at the top of the island. Possibly a campsite or some other structure has w- at one point been there. Uh, a few of the uh, three of the other crew members actually also go with Skaggs, and Billy Knives is kind of standing there on the beach. He's like, uh, 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 "Do I go? Who am I?" He's like, "I don't know what to do. Somebody tell me Billy. what to do." Billy, <laughs> we've been friends for years. Come on, that's enough for Billy. He puts. He just he just abandons abandons his thought process and comes marching right over to you guys. House Rabbit, what's on the map? Oh, I didn't pick it up yet. I'm just like enjoying the sunshine here. Like it is quite warm maybe. in the morning, actually. Yeah, and you were all so in the so sun. <laughs> Spell casting hippies. <laughs> <laughs> just all chilling right. here. No, I'll pick up the map. Uh, I don't. I I can't really read it though. What's on the map? Doug, do you want to put that picture up for everybody? There you go. This is the this is what she has in her hand right now. This is um, the you see these three rocks that are uh, at the top of the map. They are nowhere to be seen on this island. Um, so clearly, you're not on the island that you are looking for at the moment. Oh, well, this map's pointless. I throw it down. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the map back up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You read the you read the bit at the bottom. Where it says only those with the heart of the sea shall pass the doors of blood. Okay. Um, and you can see um, the little circled area in the middle of the map is actually circling a circling a cave entry. Um, and those three little rocks uh, on the side on that little peninsula are actually the rocks that are drawn on top. So that's basically what you're. That's basically what uh, what you, your captain has been looking for for the last three weeks. He's had you sailing around the Bahamas looking for this the whole time. So from the various years of us being pirates on different ships, do any of us have any knowledge of the lore? The um, thing about like the three. If you would like to make me a uh, presence test, difficulty 14, uh, well, I'll let you know. I know nothing. No? Okay. Anybody else want to try before we move on? Yeah. I'll try. I'll take a look at it. Just Okay. Okay, task grab it. Mm. No. Okay. Old gunpowder. Nat twenty. He knows everything. <laughs> oh, All right. You have heard of a rumor of a hidden temple, actually, that is ripe with riches. Um, it's mostly been untouched, though. No one has ever really managed to get to this place. Uh, it's kind of almost like a pirate, a, a pirate poke tale. I almost said <laughs> yeah. a pirate folk <laughs> tale. Um, it's something that like everybody speaks of. It's just like it's like a fairy tale for pirates kind of thing. Um, no one's ever actually seen much evidence of the island itself. But um, while you're talking about it, you can hear the other crew members are like, "Oh yeah, you know, the captain's been. The captain says he's seen it once before. He just didn't know what it was, and now that he has the map, he thought he knew, or he thought he knew what he was do, what he was looking for. So that's why we've been out here this whole time. So possibly some truth to it. Hmm. But for yeah. now, what would you like to do, marooned on your little island? Yeah. Can you tell us? All Not that? this island. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention it. Like. This is a that's a that's a big deal. I it's mean, a fiery tail. <laughs> but I mean, if we're not on that island, I mean, we just pocket the map and then try and find a way off this island. I mean, I think we should go up the hill to see what's around the island we're on and get some, you know, get our bearings. Yeah, there's enough okay. wood on the shore that if we need to build like a raft or a small skiff, we can make it happen. I just have no idea where we need to go. All right. So you want to go up the hill? Everybody? You're all in favor, say R. Kevin, do you want to go up the hill? (laughs) Kevin's running up that hill. Kevin Kevin says yes. Look, he's shaking his head yes. 
I will reluctantly agree to walk up the hill. Okay. Oh, that's right. You are remarkably lazy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to, but I guess I will. <laughs> All right. Wanna. It takes you about an hour from the beach to get up to the top oh, of the God. hill. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you find Skaggs already there. Um, he has found the wreckage of an abandoned camp of some sort up there. Um, he's rummaging through boxes looking for stuff. Um, he's already got an extra flintlock tucked into his belt uh, that he's pulled out of one box. Um, but from this vantage point, you can see the entire island. It's quite small. It's maybe three miles uh, of size all around. But uh, a couple of the other crew members immediately notice that they can see two islands from this island. Um, they can't tell which is which. One of them is substantially larger than the other. Um, the smaller one is covered in vegetation. You can't really see much of it other than the fact that it is substantially larger than this island, if nothing else. Um, and the secondary island, which is massive, is um, probably, you know, a good day or so sail across with a raft if you want to make one. Hmm. What do we want to do, Kevin? Give me a presence test, Beardy. Difficulty 12. No. That was a no. five. Okay. No worries. Kevin, speak up. You're supposed to tell me what we're supposed <laughs> to do. So it's us, two other islands, and nothing else? You cannot see anything else on the horizon whatsoever. These are your only two choices. Can I, like, cast a spell to try and give us all some insight on which way to go? If you want to test presence, you sure can, yeah. Difficulty 12. Okay. 16. All right. So TaskRabbit sits down um, on the cleanest possible spot she could find, probably on one of the boxes, um, and kind of loses herself to her thoughts for a little while. And at one point you see her eyes start to flicker and you can see a glow coming from behind them. She's obviously doing something mystical in nature. And a few minutes later, she comes out of her trance and she stands up and she points at the smaller of the two islands. And that's all she does. But, but that's, I mean, it's obviously an indication from what she's been doing that this is where you need to go. It's up to you guys if you want to take that. I mean, her little well-dressed ghost person save my neck so i'm with task rabbit well first thing we need to do is build a ship yeah captains don't build ships but you guys should totally get on that <laughs> you guys really should get on that <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure task rabbit's good like you know that was a long spiritual thing i grabbed like a palm leaf off it like, oh good. oh wow look at you yeah. getting catered to all oh. right <laughs> how much that's a ship. Kevin says, Kevin says he'll make ship. Let's make ship. Um, while you, while Kevin's waving around in the air, you can kind of feel it tugging in one direction, Beardy. Like a dowsing rod kind of thing. Oh. oh. One direction, Dan. I'm concerned. It's a great band. <laughs> um, okay. Are you going to follow what? it or are you just going to be like, what's going on? Kevin. What? Kevin, Ke Ke Kevin, where are you going, Kevin? Kevin, where are you going? Okay, so Beardy kind of stumbles away down down the hill hillside a little bit uh, towards one side of the camp, and stops at a massive trail of blood that leads down the opposite side of the hill. Like you came up from the south side, going downwards towards the north side of the island, um, and ending at the beach. You can see it some distance away is a massive thick trail of recently dried blood and oh, it goes off okay. it goes into the waves and is just gone after that kevin you want to make friends <laughs> <laughs> i mean we gotta go to the beach anyway we might as well follow it and see what happens right, i just have to say something over the table real quick after yeah. this is over doug is never allowed to use that laugh ever again <laughs> 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 gotta retire that <laughs> it ends after this session <laughs> Super creepy. Creepy it's, um, 
while he's while he's standing over that trail of blood, uh, Skaggs is shouting at him from the box. He's like, "Beardy, get away from that! You don't need to be anywhere near that. That's nothing for you." Kevin, do you want to go make friends with Skaggs? <laughs> All right. I don't like the idea that there's something that could eat us and drag us in the water. So I would like to explore over by where the blood trail is while Kevin makes friends. Okay. So you're going to go down to the north side of the island? Okay. Um, Skaggs has managed to recover a musket and a flintlock and a few basic provisions. Um, not that he shows any particular signs of sharing with anybody because he's decided he's on his own now. Um, but he does follow the group all the way down to the beach um, at a distance. He's not. He's still, he's a bit butthurt about being divested of his potential captaincy, even though there's no ship in sight. Um, when you get to the shoreline, you notice there's all sorts of, um, you know when you poke the sand with a stick and it leaves that kind of little pockmark in the sand? There's dozens of those um, on either side of this blood trail going into the water, but that is really the only evidence that is apparent there. Um, there's no body to be found uh, on the shoreline. Um, there's no wreckage on this side of the island. It's all back on the south side of the island. Um, and when you get down there, it's approaching noon at that point. All right. I would like to back away from wherever the pock marks are in the in the sand. Mm -hmm. okay. And I would like to ask Skaggs if he'd like to be promoted to assistant captain. captain. Assistant to the captain. Assistant to the captain. All right. You mean first mate, don't you? No, I mean assistant to the captain. <laughs> That's the first mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tis the role I filled on the other ship. Um, you know what? Um, give me presents and I'm going to roll presents for him. And we'll see We'll see how that goes. We'll do a pose. 19. Oh, wait. With presents? 19. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. He... He's amenable to the idea. He, he very quickly capitulates. He's he's not willing to make enemies of everybody on this island and possibly be left behind on whatever raft or boat that you manage to cobble together to get off of this thing. So he's entirely willing to fall into line as the first mate. Uh, a captain needs a, a, a musket from the first mate. A musket? No, wait. Okay. What was the gun? You want a flintlock, the pistol, or the lock. rifle? Okay, so you want the pistol. pistol. Okay. All right, so he hands over the pistol. He's fine with that. <laughs> What do we think right. happened here? Uh, I got. I have no idea, Captain. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And I've seen skeletons and zombies and sorcery, and this is new. That's why he's assistant to the Captain and not first mate. Well, you didn't know either. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should build a raft of some sort and try and get to that other island, I feel like. Before it gets dark. Well, we can build a camp or something if it gets dark. I oh, know. I think I saw a raft on the other side of the island. Took you long enough to mention something. Really? <laughs> Freaking lazy. <laughs> Let's go check that out. That's my suggestion. And we'll see if we can't get to this other island and avoid the big pool of blood, maybe. All right, so everybody's on board with going back over the hill? Yeah, but Beardy's going to look over, look across the, the beach, like, one more time before he follows, he reluctantly follows everybody back over to the other beach. Nothing really unusual about the beach itself, other than the blood trail going into the water. Um, you'll notice a few other areas where it looks like things have been poked to the stick, um, yeah. but nothing, nothing blood-related near them. Because Beardy's job is beach... That's, okay. That's yeah. <laughs> As we're going back over, do we find anything in the wreckage along the way or just along the ground that would be helpful to us? There um, are. <laughs> at the at the top of the hill, um, there's enough supplies there for a couple of days for the for everybody. Uh, as you don't have any food or water, obviously, other than the barrel of rum the Task Rabbit came in on. And whatever the, well, no, I mean, I had a crate that I overboard and tried to stay afloat on i don't know if yeah the right. your crate also has a day's worth of supplies in it oh nice okay what about my sea chest uh your sea chest is lost unfortunately oh. it's far too heavy for you to carry in the in the surf with it while what attached a, to a barrel of rum <laughs> what about my barrel 
Your barrel is uh, like toothpicks Tinder. for a skeleton I... ogre. Tinder. Mm. It would make good firewood, yes. And once it dries out. I right. hope we craft the cask of rum because it helps with the ship repairing and building and prepping. Might you 100% can crack yes. open the rum if you like, yeah. I mean, Ready? you might have to, you might have to fight TaskRabbit for it. If you would like, you can try to get drunk and it actually will recover you a few hit points. Oh, we can take a brief respite with the cask of, of rum before we figure out this whole raft and sail okay. together. Yeah, I'll share. Okay. All right. Appreciate you, Task Rabbit. All right. So, every, how many drinks is everybody going to have? I'm I'm not going to have any drinks, but but Kevin's going to have. Like, he's going to Kevin's going to get really drunk on rum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, Everybody give me, um, oh, what is it? Is it presents? I can't remember what test it is for the drinking. I know it's a test. Shoot. <laughs> I feel like I it should be spirit. I don't know if that's uh, Yeah, accurate. okay. That, you know what? Let's, let's use spirit just, just for this instance. Uh, difficulty rating eight plus however many drinks you had. So if you had one drink, difficulty rating nine. I probably had like four drinks. Okay. So you're going to be difficulty rating 13. All right. I went drink for drink with Task Rabbit, Rabbit, so I also had four. Okay. Okay, so you heal one point. Yes. And uh, what did you get, Task Rabbit? Twelve. Twelve? Okay. You Wait. start vomiting. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Okay. So uh, Captain J heals a hit point. Uh, Task Rabbit starts puking uncontrollably for about a half an hour. You don't lose any hit points, but you don't regain any either. Uh, Beardy? Uh, I did not drink any, but uh, Kevin is very, very drunk, as you can see, and he starts mm -hmm. like wobbling. He's wobbling all over the place. I don't know if you can see how drunk Kevin is. <laughs> Kevin's super drunk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, Kevin, Gunpowder, you got to you watch your drinking, Kevin. Um, I Kevin, I've drinks. talked to you. <laughs> okay. And roll the seven. All right. So you <laughs> also don't gain it. You don't get any points back, and you puke the same as Task Rabbit for a while. On two. Oh, yes. I'm like, are uh, you scurvy persons can't hold your liquor? Once you get back to the other <laughs> side of the beach with the wreckage and everything, um, the few crew members that you have left, Skags, uh, Billy Knives, um, and if any of you want to get involved, it will make the work go faster. Um, if you want to start working on a raft. Yes, for sure. Okay, so that takes you uh, until sundown, uh, at Wait. which point it's... Hmm? Wait, we, I was leading everybody to the side of the island where there was a raft, but I but it was a but trick. There, but there isn't a raft, yes. It was a trick. <laughs> I just want to point out that, that I was just tricking you all. For it, fun. it was just a funny joke, everybody. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my joke. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed. I it. thought I joke. thought your joke was funny. Kevin did not think your <laughs> joke was funny, though. Kevin, okay, you got to get a sense of humor. <laughs> so night falls. Um, what is everybody going to do overnight? Uh, sleep it off, or you can't really work through the night. Um, not enough light available. Yeah, sleep. Yeah, it I off. have a torch, but I would like to sleep. Okay. Um. I'd like to look for a tree or something like a little higher ground separate from the group to sleep in because there was a trail of blood earlier. There were weird holes. I'm paranoid. Maybe so. Okay. You can... I don't know about all that. If you're all asleep by the fire and drunk, like it, whatever it is, is going to eat you before me. <laughs> you're going to seek higher ground. Yeah. Just like if there's a tree or something I can get into where I can, you know? uh, there's no trees on this island, unfortunately. It's just low bushes, mostly, for the entire island. Well, that's some crap. Um, I would like to curl up against some bushes with my blanket there where, you know, I'm camouflaged by the bushes. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So you all fall asleep. You're having whatever dreams you might like to have, nightmares of the ship uh, breaking around you, the black skeleton ogre stomping towards you, that kind of thing. Um Kevin getting entirely shiny clean, that sort of thing. Um, 
a little bit after midnight, uh, you hear an ear piercing shriek, um, and everybody is woken up by it. Um, and you hear, um, a bu- uh, some chittering and a bunch of scuttling and one of the pirates is being drug away towards the surf, uh, by something. You can't really make it out. It's too dark. There's just not enough light available. Um, the other pirates are all like leaping to their feet and grabbing what piddly, pit, pitiful little weapons that they might have to hand, um, and they're desperately trying to um, to rescue their friend. Uh, when one of the other pirates, you hear a shriek again, and they go down. Um, so, what would you all like to do before we get to initiative or other things? Um, I would like to like like to have Kevin wake up before I wake up. From the screaming, <laughs> and then like, cause, cause Kevin's like on my chest, like we're like cuddling, like I'm laying on the bed, and like Kevin just like wakes up, and then I'll be like, <laughs> and I'll like look at Kevin, and then I'll look and look at the direction for the screaming, and I'll like get up on my feet and try to go see where the screaming is coming. Okay, um, you run about ten feet, and you can see um, if you want to put up the uh, picture of the uh, shoal spider. You see that dragging what there's two of them actually dragging a crewman each towards the surf. They are very large, um, probably about the size of, I want to say like a, a large dog. Um, 17 eyes. I think it was yeah, is it 17 or is it 13? I can't remember. There's lots of eyes. <laughs> I don't think you really want to stop and count them, yeah, but anyway, right. um, it is. And you, that row of teeth underneath it, you can already see it. It's chewing on this, on this poor pirate. Um, there's blood spraying everywhere, hence the trail that you saw from the top of the island down into the water earlier. Run away! All right, uh, everybody roll me initiative real quick. You like that number, don't you, Doug? I do, number two. You got a seven. Okay. Okay. Two. And a seven as well? Okay. And sorry, what did you get, Michelle? Two. Oh, okay. You're, you're same thing as Doug. All right. All right. So the two shoal spiders continue to drag these poor, unfortunate souls down the beach. The, um, their three remaining uh, nondescript pirate crew are attempting to fight them off, having very little luck. They're bouncing off the armor plating of the of the spiders. Um, it's very hard to see anything. Like, as I said, they're dragging, they've drug you away from what little light you did have into the darkness. So you can barely see anything that's going on. Um, we will start with old gunpowder. Um, I am going to, do we have a campfire? Uh, it's mostly coals at this point. No one has been awake to tend it through the night. Right. You could try to revive it if you want. Um, uh, can I advance and, and strike at one of the uh, spider monstrosities with my uh, boarding axe? Sure you can, yeah. You'll be leaving the protection of what little light you do have, though, so you'll be in complete darkness. Mm. I don't like this. Let's stoke the fire to get more light, then. That'll help. I don't think that'll help ever. Okay. So you grab a few bits and pieces of wood and whatnot, whatnot that's laying around and toss it on the fire and start uh, fanning it to try and get it to catch. And it starts to, it starts to catch and starts to rise up a little bit. It's providing a little bit more light. It'll, it'll grow as, uh, as the turn goes on. Um, and we will move on to Captain Jay in the meantime. All right. So I'm hiding behind the bush as I see uh, old gunpowder here stoking the fire. Mm-hmm. I'm what, like 15 feet? You're about 15 feet outside of the camp itself, yeah. Okay. Um, I do have torches. Would I still have mm-hmm. them after the... Yeah, a little personal effects is fine. It's just, unfortunately, uh, TaskRabbit's sea chest is just a, too large of an item okay. to have on you at, at any given time. So I would like to run to where he's stoking the fire to try and light my porch to see if I can... Torch, so if I can fend off whatever it is that's attacking us in the darkness. Okay. Um, while you're running, you're about seven feet away from the fire... You'll be there in moments. Um, you pass by another one of them in the darkness that it was slowly crawling towards your hiding spot. 
but it hasn't caught you yet. So you, you see it just kind of out of the corner of your eye, like just all, all of you, just the, the little bit of firelight that is being generated catches on its faceted eyes and you're just like, holy, this, you know, this thing was like right next to you kind of thing. I as you see a little past and it. run a little faster. <laughs> you make it to the fire um, un, unharmed uh, and you're trying to light your torch for the rest of your round. Uh, and we will move on to TaskRabbit. Hmm. I just uh, would like to try and cast my my spirit protection. Okay, on whom in particular? Uh, I'm pretty sure whoever was a did gunpowder go running after them. Gunpowder was going to, but then decided to stoke the fire instead. The only oh, people okay. that are currently attacking them are the uh, miscellaneous crew. Skags and Billy Knives are still around the fire with you guys. Okay, well, I can't see Captain J, so I'll protect Captain J. Okay. All right. So you take a moment and you focus all your concentration on your spell on your spell casting, and once again, Captain J, you have a little translucent companion, well dressed, hanging out by you. He gives you a little bit of a nod, you know, like, "Hey, me again." <laughs> <laughs> you know, fist bump the skeleton, the the phantasmal uh, aid. All right, uh, and that takes uh, Task Rabbit's turn, and we go to Beardy. Uh, Beardy is going to uh, rush towards the nearest uh, skull spider okay. and grab its one of its leg and one of its legs and start chopping it with the with Kevin the meat cleaver. Okay, um, do you want to grab it or attack it? You can't do both in one round. Uh, I guess I'm just going to attack it. Okay. I'm just going like, uh, okay. to like... Difficulty 12. Uh, that is a 13. Yes. All right. Roll me damage. Here we go. Here we go. That's a one again. Wow. Okay. Well, it's, only a D, so, it's only a D4, so I've got like yeah. a one in four chance. Yeah. Okay, um, so it chunks into the armor, into the uh, armored exterior of it. Um, you can you choose off a little bit of a divot as you as you wrench uh, Kevin free, and you can see a little bit of the goo from Kevin is caked on the is caked on the shell, and you can actually see it already starting to bubble and hiss on the shell on, on the on the shell of it, and it immediately drops the. Uh, the um the pirate that it had and steps back but you can see that one of the poor pirate's legs is already gone from the hip down it's just a bloody mess um and it the the creature like turns its attention to you and it is their turn so it is going to attack you good and it well actually it doesn't uh it doesn't hit you um but you can see these two large pinchers reach out towards you and you can see them snapping um it has quite a bit of reach not extensive but bad uh, bad amount of reach and it rears up on its back legs to like do a like a threat pose kind of thing and you can see this like nasty mouth full of teeth underneath it ready to now, devour you now here here's the thing it says that from uh the target loses d6 hit points at the start of its next two turns yep so do I get to roll a d6 now? Because you, it's, you can it's roll it right turn. now if you want. Yep. Four. Four. Okay. Cool. You can see you can see a little bit of the uh, of the whatever infection you've managed to give it. It starts to like ooze out of the sides of the carapace a little bit. It's pretty disgusting. All right. Um, the other shoal spider is going to continue dragging away the um, poor unfortunate soul because it's more concerned with taking its meal back. Um, and we are going to go back to, to uh, the top of the round, which is going to put Captain J in the hot seat again. All right. Um, did I light the torch? You have your torch lit now. Jason, I think, is it just me? Is your connection weird for anyone else? Yeah, your, your, your mic seems to be cutting out, oh, Jay. Is it, um, is it okay now? Okay. Seems to be going now. It was a little robotic. It's like okay. you were like ah, as you were talking. It was weird. Oh, I wasn't doing it on purpose. I promise. All right. Um, I would like to take my torch and whatever spider creature thing is closest to me. Try and like light its eyes on fire. 
uh, that would be the one that Beardy is currently fighting. So uh, give me, uh, you want to try and light its eyes on fire? Well, I mean, I want to try and like take my torch okay. and stab it in the eyes. There's more. Okay, no, that's that's fine. I just, I just, yeah. Yeah. Um, difficulty rating twelve, um, and it's a strength test. Uh, I swing and a miss. All right. So while you swing uh, in typical torch fashion, you you get that streak of light that happens whenever you swing a torch really quickly. Um, you notice behind the uh, two, the one that Beardy is fighting and the one that is still dragging the other pirate away, you can see a cluster of dozens of lights flickering off of eye stalks in the darkness. Just for your can own the information. yell anything after I see that? Sure you can, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a shout away. All right. There's hundreds of them in the water. Make for the hill. Oh, lovely. Run. Pirates, run. <laughs> okay. So that's going to move us along to Old Gunpowder. Um, the fire is roaring now. All right. Well, so that's good because I want to take a stick that's on fire and start running up the hill with my fire. Like, get the heck out of there. Okay, uh, as you sprint past the edge of the fire, you run past the one that was actually trying to sneak up on Captain Jay initially, and you notice immediately when you run past it with the torch, it recoils and flees into the darkness oh. from the light of your torch. Oh, I stop. <laughs> fire. <laughs> I don't like the fire. I don't like the fire. Okay, so that's going to take us to Task Rabbit. Um, I'm still, what, laying by the fire? <laughs> you are still by the fire. That's where you started off, yeah? Okay. Uh, I would like to attempt to go towards the hill. I will take the advice. I, I do have a peg leg, so I'm probably not running very fast, but I would like to try and escape. We don't really hamper movement based on peg legs. It's more of a thematic no? thing. So you're, you, you can move just fine. <laughs> I just think it's going to be like funny where you're like, kind of like... Yeah, you're you're doing the peg leg run for sure, but you've been doing it long enough that you're you're skilled enough at it that it doesn't really hamper your movement extensively. <laughs> oh, good. Then I'm running like fast as a rabbit. Are you taking Do a I light source? This, a torch. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna take it. Okay, so you're gonna grab a torch out of the fire or a stick or whatever the heck that you can find. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I have you, torches, but I'll I'll grab I'll save those. Grab one out. You go. Fire. You go pelting up the hill, um, and you get about as far as where old gunpowder is already. So the two of you will be in proximity to each other uh, for the next turn. And that takes us to Beardy. Uh, Beardy is going to, uh, to talk to Kevin, and he's going to say, Kevin, I know you want to make lots of friends, but we need to go. We need to leave, and I will... Uh, I will turn and run towards where uh, Task Rabbit is in the direction of Task Rabbit. Okay, so you're going to get just past the fire, uh, basically, by the because yeah. they're running in the other direction away from it. Um, so you'll be closer to um, Task Rabbit and Old Gunpowder next turn, um, and that is the end of your turn. So it's going to be the beginning of their turn. If you want to roll your d6 for your next round of poison on the Shoal Spider. Oh yeah. Two. All right. So you can, it's still continuing to bubble out of it. Um, it basically, it, it's not going to pursue you, actually. It decides to jump on the other pirate uh, that is already being devoured, um, and they finish it off in record time. The other three pirates that are on the beach, not including Skaggs and uh, Billy Knives, um, all turn, having heard Old Gunpowder shout about the uh, fire being a deterrent, and they make for the fire, but two of them are drugged down and away before they can reach it. Um, so only one miscellaneous pirate is going to arrive at the fire uh, after all is said and done. Um, the other, the rest of the shoal spiders are going to retreat down the beach into the ocean with their prey, and they do not return. So as, uh, at this point, you have the fire stoked high enough that it's repelling basically any anything that they might come after. They're not interested. They're opportunity hunters, so they're not going to risk exposing themselves to further combat. And that poison only lasts for two rounds, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so um, you all huddle around the fire, um, eyes wide open, you know, spending the rest of the night until the dawn starts to crack over the horizon and the sun starts to come up, and you see... 
again, two, three big trails of blood leading away from the camp where these poor, unfortunate pirate souls have been drug away to their doom. Uh, no sign of the shoal spiders. They have completely vanished into the water. And you have the morning to yourselves now to uh, continue building a raft if you would like or whichever else you might want to do. I mean, I think we uh, get the fudge off this island. Yeah, finish the raft <laughs> and aim towards that other next island and try an island hop until we find something that doesn't kill us. Okay. Well, so, those, things are in, <laughs> those things are in the water. So we have to leave in the time that we think will get us to the other island and in time to build a fire. If we can't, then we have to build like the fire of fires tonight. <laughs> Burn captain. the whole island. <laughs> You know in that one Pirates of the Caribbean movie when they burn the rum, it makes a pretty big fire. Just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So um, once everybody is so, as calm as they're going to get, um, ra- work continues on the raft. You manage to get it seaworthy enough with a small sail from some of the canvas wreckage from the uh, tarantula by noon. So if you would like, you can set sail at noon. I mean, we're pretty experienced sailors. Based on the distance we think the other island is, how long do we think it's going to take us to get over there? Uh, make me a, we'll call it presence test. Difficulty 12. I'm a noob. I don't know nothing. I'll check. <laughs> 18. You're pretty confident that you'll make it there probably around sunset. Do we, do we still have the fire going from last night? If you would like to have it going, you're more than welcome to have it going. Okay. I would... How many torches do I have? Hang on. I never actually rolled how many torches I had. So. All right. Um, I just would like to find a way to take some fire with us so we don't spend a lot of time trying to build a fire if we're getting there at sunset. I have flint and steel, so it should be fairly quick, depending on the vegetation on the island. All right. In that case, I'd like to... What, what were we saying, Doug? I also have flint and steel, yeah. Okay. Since we don't know what's over there, I'm at least going to try and take like a little handful of like kindling and dry wood with us. Yeah, and you can take a small bundle, yeah. Yeah. Have, yeah, for sure. I yeah. take that with me. I just... I don't like spiders, man. I don't like them. I want to make sure we have fire. Okay. Anybody else want to do anything before you get on the raft? Bring the rest of the rum. The barrel is a little too large to go on the raft. Well, that's, I shouldn't say that. You can try to take the barrel on the raft. It will make raft handling a little bit more awkward. Could we tie it to the back of the raft to help keep our buoyancy? You can't sure. in the water, you know? Yeah, for sure you can, yeah. I can't promise it'll work, but you can sure do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All Let's right. Let's do it. Let's shot. All right. All right. So you shove off from the island, everybody panicked, looking at the water, waiting for a shoal spider to leap out of the leap out of the shoreline. But it doesn't happen. You get away from the island. Um, one of the uh, one of the other pirates uh, manages the sail, keeps it furled, you know, properly tacked and everything. Um, Skaggs is basically handling most of the uh, shipboard thing, directioning and whatnot and that sort of thing. Um, uh, Billy Knives is on the rudder, so the rest of you are left to your own devices, just waiting to get across. Um, as the day goes on, somebody roll me a D six, please. One. You got a one? I okay. did. Uh, n- the, your afternoon is completely uneventful. You managed to make it across just as sunset is, the sun oh, is starting wait. to dip in. Oh, sorry? I want to do something. Okay. While we're all just sitting on the, on the raft, floating across to the island, mm-hmm. I'd like to clean Kevin. <gasps> Are you an agent of chaos? Okay, uh, how are we gonna, how, okay, explain to me how you want to do this. I'm just, I just want to play a trick on, on Beardy by cleaning Kevin. It's just, it's a harmless prank. 
Okay, but he doesn't usually let go of Kevin. So how would you be trying to? How are you going to try and clean it while he's while he's like and and make it sneaky? I'm gonna uh, throw some some rum on it as like alcohol to to try and like clean it off, and use the the bottom of my fancy pants to try and clean it so so i'm not actually close to him just my just my pants right there cleaning kevin okay um lots of time to do this you know we're just yeah yeah here. um so. give me an agility test uh we're gonna call it difficulty 12. we'll, we'll say that beardy's like on the side of the raft just kind of playing in the water with kevin like off oh, to his Lord. side That's seven. Yeah, you can use the devil's luck if you want to re-roll it <laughs> For this. For this. Wait, wait, can I pick up on what she's trying to do? <laughs> if you want, I mean, you can see that she's trying something. You might not necessarily know what the exact outcome is, but you know, she's trying to mess with Beardy. That's that's the gist that you get. I would like to uh, wink at Task Rabbit and be like, Beardy, has Kevin made friends with fishes? There's lots of fishes in the water that Kevin could make friends with. No, Kevin could make friends with the fishes. You should take Kevin to the fishes in the water. I bet the longer you leave Kevin in the water, the more fishy friends he makes. Oh, oh, oh. he'll look at Kevin. Kevin, let's make lots of friends. And he'll start to just kind of like stab the water like re repeatedly. <laughs> All right. Um, Give me okay, Beardy. Give me a presence test. Difficulty twelve. We'll we'll call it twelve for now. That's a ten. Okay, you don't notice. Uh, you're having so much fun. You do not <laughs> notice that Kevin is getting remarkably less gross as you're splashing around in the water. Oh. So I'll I'll leave it to you for how long you want to continue making friends with fishes. If you, you guys do want to try and hit a fish. Yes, I do actually. Okay, give me give me difficulty twelve strength test. Uh, seven. Okay, <laughs> so oh, sorry, that's an eight. Eight. okay, so you're splashing around in the water, you're hacking away at it, and you do see quite a few fish because the splashing is attracting a lot of fish, and you notice there's a few fins popping up in the distance as well, but they're that's not relevant to your concerns right now. You're trying to make friends with fish, so you're splashing around and you're splashing around and you're splashing around, and when you finally get tired of it, and you realize that Kevin hasn't really made any friends with fish, and you're feeling a little bit sad. And you've got Kevin, you're kind of, you're just like dangling your feet in the water and you, you're resting Kevin on your knee and you look at Kevin and Kevin looks different. Okay, do, do I just see myself in Kevin? You can, yeah. I like, see like, my, my, like yeah. I see my reflection in Kevin? <laughs> almost, like, yes. You almost can. <laughs> what happened to Kevin? I would like Kevin, to Kevin and, like, a, Kevin and, so ugly. and laugh. Yes, hysterically laugh. Yeah. We're like high fiving whatever like secret pirate signals we have. It's a good time. <laughs> and then can can I like look look in back of me and look at them and like they do they do the whole thing where they're like totally serious the second I turn around and then like yes absolutely yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Poor Kevin. While Beardy is inconsolable, um, you notice that there are now seven fins surrounding the raft as you get closer to shore. Oh, oh crap! We're gonna take watch. <laughs> all all of the splashing around is attracting quite a, quite a, quite a bit of attention from fishes. <laughs> Kevin, now's your time to make real friends and get dirty again. Get those friends. Friends and food. How far away are the Ah, they're about 10 to 15 feet away. They're circling the raft as you get closer to shore. Do you want to try and get Kevin dirty again? Um yeah, I think I do. All right. Um the sharks will eventually come in close enough for you to take a swing at one if you want. It's just standard difficulty twelve. Right. Oh, actually, no. Difficulty ten for you. Yeah, ten. For, yeah. I keep forgetting that with your guy. Uh, that's a six. <laughs> okay. One of the sharks ducks in and tries to attack you. 
as you swing at it. Um, let's see. It does hit you. Uh, you want to roll me a d6? Yep. Five. It does five points of damage. Oh, Chows down on your leg. Tears a big old chunk out of you and swims away. Why, Kevin? Why didn't you protect me, Kevin? So Beardy's bleeding all over the place in front of everybody, which is driving the other remaining sharks absolutely bonkers. I, uh, so what would you all like to do? I try to push Kevin towards the bleeding leg. Like, here, here. <laughs> Are you this, gonna let her? Like, yeah, absolutely. Okay, does so the, she pushes Kevin blood, again. Okay. Does the blood go into like the water? Well, I mean, you're gonna get some on Kevin, but I mean, not not anywhere near the level that he was at. So, gotcha. But he does look a little less shiny now. All right. So I like wipe Kevin in my dark bit leg. <laughs> In your in your own wound, <laughs> yeah. how metal is that? <laughs> oh, okay. oh, Kevin, you're looking so much nicer. <laughs> are you gonna get your feet out of the water, or are you gonna? Yeah, I'm guessing that like the blood is like dripping down my leg and into the water. Oh yeah, it's it's a pretty significant wound. Yeah, like the other sharks are literally in a frenzy around the boat right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely not uh, definitely not going to be in that water at all. I'm just all right. well, as long as you raft, all stay on rubbing. the raft, yeah. As long as you stay on the raft, you're relatively safe. Um, a few of them do start to attack the raft. Uh, just it's it's not to their taste, of course. I mean, and they're not inhumanly large sharks; they're just regular sharks. Um, by the time you reach the shore, the raft is fairly damaged, though. Quite a lot, quite a lot of the roping is coming apart, and it's not going to be very seaworthy once you get it ashore uh, at this point. So it's, well, basically this raft is a one and done kind of deal. Um, but you do make it ashore safely on the island. And what would you like to do once you get to shore? Make a fire. Yep, make a fire. Make a fire. <laughs> I was hoping you guys would forget that part. Mm, not a chance. <laughs> 13 to 17 eyed spider creatures? Nope, we're making a fire. <laughs> Okay, so you pile up onto the shore and you find a small clearing and you drag the uh, drag the raft up, uh, such as it, whatever remains of it, and you quickly and hastily make a fire for the evening as the sun sets. In the distance, actually, off the shore of the island, you see a massive glow in the water. You have no idea what it might be, but it is moving. Um, and other than that, it stays in your view for a few minutes and then drifts off out to sea. You have no idea what it might have been. It's actually like out of game. It's it's what I rolled initially, um, but it's an, a nighttime only event. <laughs> so you, di you didn't get that particular event. That's why I gave you the sharks instead. Hmm. Um, okay, so you, while you are on this new island uh, for the evening, it is an uneventful evening. You have nothing in particular crazy, weird, wild, or otherwise. Um, the only problem is it was dark when you got here, so you couldn't see if there were your three rocks. Uh, that were indicating your caves. So unfortunately you don't learn anything about that. Um, you have a completely restful evening though, so you can uh, restore some hit points if you want, which is, um, let me check here. Uh, da, 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 rest, uh, you're gonna have a long rest. You're gonna re recover 1d8 hit points for everybody. Beardy, roll that damn, roll that. <laughs> We're stuck frozen. One, 1d6? Uh, Doug is frozen. Is that is awesome. Yeah, Doug yeah. is like so serious. I you have like, this super oh. serious look on your face, but you are completely frozen, Doug. <laughs> that is amazing. That is just, I thought he was just despondent after having Kevin cleaned. <laughs> That's what I thought he was making like like a super serious. Sentence. Yeah, like super serious Doug kind frozen. of thing. Like, oh, you, you clean my Kevin. I mean, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while Doug is away. Um, you guys okay so far? You having fun? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Are cool. you kidding me? We got Doug to like, you know, clean Kevin and lose part of a leg. That's fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe that worked out like that. That was awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Michelle, you've had, this is your third TT RPG experience. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, you having fun? Yeah. 
Absolutely. We're like, you've played two games. You can do a live stream. It's fine. Like, huh. <laughs> terrifying. Fireborg is for Fireborg is very forgiving as a rule set for that sort of thing. So it's not it's not as heavy as like even five E can be kind of crunchy. So there is one rule though with Pirate Borg, Michelle, that you have to know. We never tell Luke, Limithron, Tyler that they did a good job. Okay. It's it's in the rules. Yeah. You you have to be like, it was okay. Like as I <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I wish you would, would put a little more effort in. We never say it was amazing. We can say it to each other. But we can't say it to them. Yes. <laughs> You can right. say it on live stream. <laughs> yeah, he was actually here briefly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if he's if he's still here, he just you literally just gave that away. <laughs> no, no, no. I need you to edit that out, Doug. <laughs> it's can. live. You can't edit live. Well, I, can, I can edit and post. I can edit and post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, there'll be no proof of it. Yes. All right. So did, so, did we heal any? Uh, yeah, one d eight damage, it. Doug. One one d eight. Oh. One d eight. Yeah. For you got a full night's rest. Jason was telling you that uh, making a very you know, stoic cool. face, and we thought yeah, you were that so was sad about Kevin. That, yeah, like, literally. Oh. That's I, I just thought you were annoyed about Kevin. Okay, so everyone has rolled their health back up. Okay, cool. Uh, so dawn comes. Um, this island is covered in quite a bit more vegetation. Uh, not, I wouldn't say dense jungle, but there's palm trees. There's all sorts of um, dark and mysterious areas that you can explore. Um, you're on the beach right now, uh, but from where you are, you can actually see a tidal cave not too far down the beach away from you. Um, there's only You can only see one entrance, so it might be what you're looking for. It might not be. It's, mm, you'll have to go investigate if you want. I feel like we need to find the three stones, otherwise... We just need to find a way to get out of here. Yeah, I'd like to get some height to see what's around us. You can try to find high ground if you like, yeah. Everybody on board with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. All right. Do we want to so look, you, we want to look at the map again? Hmm. Yes. Right. Interesting. Okay. There's multiple. Oh. So here's the thing, is if those three actually indicate three islands, then if we get to a high point here, if we can see something beyond the next island that looks coastal, we might be towards the cave. I just all like you to know I failed map reading, and that's how Mark and I met, and he married me. So <laughs> um, don't trust what I'm saying. Do not let Captain J be your orienteering guide. Yeah. We need to find the three stones. All right. Let's go high and look. All right. So you set off into the jungle. Uh, you bushwhack for about half the day. It takes you quite a bit longer. This is a very gradual rise. It's not as steep as the uh, small island that you were on. But you do find yourselves at one point uh, at the top of what you can tell anyway from where you're standing uh, of the highest point that you've reached. Um, Skaggs orders one of the pirates to scamper up a palm tree nearby and a few minutes later, he comes rolling back down the tree. He's like, hey, Skaggs, I know where we be. We're on Rum K. And Skaggs is just like, what? How can we be there? There's no way we can be there. Go back up and look again. So the silly pirate goes back up again. He comes back down. He's like, ah, yeah, this, I can see Port Nelson from here. It's Rum K. What does that mean? But uh, um, Skaggs is confused for a minute and he's like there's no there's no rocks on this island of that size there's nothing like this is definitely not the island we'd be looking for hmm. from where you are though um you can you guys can't see it because you're down on the ground level but um port nelson is actually on the far side of the island on the eastern side of the island he just knows it's there because he recognized one of the buildings It'd be about a day and a half walk to get there through the jungle. Or if you want to try and go along the coast, you can, but the coast is very rough from what you could see before you set off into the trees to go look. So we're on an inhibited or inhabited island? Yes. There, uh, there is a port on, well, it's, Port Nelson is kind of a, it's like a rum trading post, or it used to be a rum trading post. You have my interest. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't feel like the cave is going to be next to an island with a settlement. Or I guess it could be underneath yeah. everyone's nose. I mean, yeah, I that's possible. Yeah. That's that, that's another thing too. Like you, you like you quickly realize that depending on how large those rocks ever were, they could very well just be overgrown. I mean, it's worth taking a look. Go down on the coast, and if we're if we're headed down that way, if it takes us to the port, we'll check the coast. We could go down there and see if someone will sell us a smaller ship for. However much we've For all done. of all of the money you don't have on you. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know if you know this or not, but Captain Jay was with three other captains, and we loaded all the treasure in uh, my yeah. my yeah. boat in Let's in skip. your dinghy, yeah, which is now destroyed. And... No, no, no. <laughs> I did a lot of things with that treasure beforehand. I got some necklaces made out of treasure. Oh, you know, so you're saying water. that you should have drowned in all of that water is what you're saying. I didn't say too much. <laughs> no fool, but I got a, I got a, I got a necklace with links of gold around it. Okay. So you're not broke. Okay. I'm not broke. I, I will, I will give you that. All right. So what's the plan? I should go check the coast for the three rocks and see if they're there, there near the, the cave entrance that we saw. Sold. Okay. Can't hurt. I'm not interested right. in any walking, really. But I will. <laughs> Task Rabbit is done. <laughs> Task Rabbit, do you want to jump on Beardy's back? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I do not right. want to walk. I'll bend. I'll bend down, and I'll let the. Uh, I'll let Task Task Rabbit uh, jump on my back, and then I'll it carry is... Task Rabbit. Unbelievably easy for you to carry Task Rabbit because you are a massive, massive individual. <laughs> Why did we do this a long time ago? Jeez, <laughs> I'm never walking anywhere again. Do you say uh, Taskmaster runs Barter Town as your? It's my bad joke for the evening. All right, so you make your way back down to the beach. Um, it's a little past noon by the time you get back down there. Um, you move along the shoreline a little bit and you s reach the entrance of a cave. Um, it's impassable by boat, so it's a good thing you don't have a boat or have to worry about. Um, but there is enough of a walkable surface for you to enter the cave from the outside by on foot. Um, it is quite dark inside the cave. So. I still have a will, torch. You do, yes. I have one torch it? left. Let's get that going. <coughs> I light the torch. Okay, anybody else got a light source they want to worry about beforehand? I'll light uh, a torch. Okay, so Task Rabbit and Captain J have torches, so that's going to provide you guys with an uh, ample amount of light. Pipe and tobacco, does that count as a light? I mean, I'll just light Well, light. I mean, in the darkness, people might be able to find you, but it's not a light source. <laughs> Task Rabbit, am I still carrying you on my back? Yeah. Okay. So you're holding the, the torch well, well above me, right? It's not like... <laughs> <laughs> right next to my head, right? Just, just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, Chat. somewhere. What's that burning smell? Beardy <laughs> smells something. <laughs> Beardy smells burnt hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get into this cave. Um, you follow it back a little bit. It's relatively small, actually. It only goes back about 30 or 40 feet. Um, you can smell ammonia everywhere, though. Um, and just... In passing, while you're walking inside, um, Task Rabbit's torch is held up high enough that she can actually see uh, a whole bunch of little tiny eyes on the ceiling. But they're not—they're not crustaceans. They're bats. There are 79 bats. Not that you're going to stop and count them all, but I rolled that. <laughs> Hanging from the ceiling of this cave. Um, they're mildly annoyed by the light source. They sh start shifting around and stuff. The ammonia, of course, is from all the bat guano underneath them uh, lying on the cave floor as you get further in. Um, you do see, though, in the torchlight, uh, that there's a series of petroglyphs on the back wall of the cave. I'd like mm. to inspect those. Okay. Uh, presence difficulty 12. Not 20. Oh, yeah. All right. Arr. I can read everything. Um, you do perfect. actually read everything. Um, and you learn quite a bit about a uh, the people that 
originally inhabited this island that are long since gone um, were very big into mysticism and they have actually written uh, a literal ritual on the wall. So I'm going to need you to, uh, as soon as I find the table here in the book, make me a roll to see what ritual you are going to learn. I can do rituals. I can Yes, help. you can. Uh, okay, let's see. Really quickly back up here. Boop. I didn't expect you to succeed at this, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, ro roll me a d20. The way you've been rolling tonight. <laughs> 12. All right. Which ritual have you learned here? Let's see. 10, 11, 12. You have learned the ritual of divination. You can ask the spirits or gods three yes or no questions when you cast this ritual. Okay. Am I the best captain? <laughs> Well, you actually have to cast the ritual. It's, you actually no, have to no. cast the ritual. Yeah. I'm just thinking of my questions. <laughs> oh, okay. You're just okay. So you're not actually doing the ritual yet. Okay. Yeah. Can you have more wishes? Can you have more questions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Unless you want to get attacked by more lobster people, you are not going to ask me that question. All right. All right. While, while you explore the rest of the cave, um, you find a pile of bones um, and some other form of excrement that you're not familiar with. Um, and you find treasure and trinkets worth 200 silver. Ooh. So we each have 25 silver. If you would like to split it up evenly. That's not evenly at all, by the way. You have other crew members. Go oh, wait. <laughs> Um, you have skags and billy knives and one there's one extra pirate so there's three plus you guys so that's seven people I wrote <laughs> there's four, that's why i said 25 captain, no, four of them four of us so who's getting the other 25 well i forgot one of them died and got dragged i was thinking there was four of them and four of us so oh, well, there used to be yeah <laughs> what were we gonna say happen? michelle I say captain should just hold it all and we can go try and buy a fit a ship like we talked about before. I, Andrew, you I like have not way. met this captain before, so that's I not like gonna end the well. Way for no, hey, we're we're good friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. We've been good friends the whole time. <laughs> that's what right. says what's up. It's mm -hmm. just a I am just one one member of the crew voting. You don't have to listen to me. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so like grabs like the top of Beardy's head and like he nods, <laughs> <laughs> and then she grabs like yanking him around by the hair. Like, like yes, you nod. agree to this, Beardy? Yeah, we're all in. Okay, so there is uh, nothing else in this cave except for there's some crystalline salt deposits on the walls, but they're just salt unless you want some salt. Tried to cut. Back. I do. Low sodium. You want to take some? Yeah, I'll take some. I run. Okay. For my sorceries. You certainly can. Chip some off the wall for a little bit. I like it. Right, then there's there's nothing else of interest in the cave. So uh, where would you like to go next? As we were going through the cave, were we searching for any like hidden? Can we search for any hidden entrances, secret doors? You can search for a little yeah. while on the way back out if you want. Yes, I would like to do that. Um, you do not find anything. Uh, some nooks and crannies that you didn't notice on the way in, but none of them lead anywhere. Okay. So once you get you back out of the cave. The cave. <laughs> Once you get back out of the cave, do you want to go east or west? East will take you towards uh, Port Nelson. Uh, west will take you away from Port Nelson. So I think before we move on, the ritual, what all do I have to do to perform the ritual? Um, it depends on how you want to cast it. If you want to cast it in a hurry... Um, you can take a, you can just do it very quickly um, and have a one minute uh, preparation time. You can take an hour um, and that uh, if you want, you can also sacrifice your own blood to make it work better. It's completely up to you. All right. I have no qualms with or squeamishness about shedding a little blood. So before we move, should we ask to get to the cave with the treasure? Should we go east? 
right? Because if the answer is, well, I know, but I'm not the brightest captain of the seven seas, so I just want to make sure we're asking the right questions. So, should we go east? And if it says no, then theoretically, right, we would go west. Or north or south. Shh. That's why I'm going to ask these questions. You can shush her all you want, but I had the exact same thoughts. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking north. Well, once, okay. <laughs> Ask, do we need a boat to get to the cave with the treasure? Because we have to go to the town to get a boat if we need it. And also, if we have to get a boat, we know that we've got to go to another island. To another island. Yep. All right. So that would, be, that would be question one that we would ask. Or could we swim to the island and then we wouldn't need a boat anyway? No, I think the island's far no, enough. No, Beardy. Nobody's swimming to an island. You could. Oh. Okay, and then here's Wait, my next question. Wait, all right. So, <clears throat> oh, dang it. We don't have another map. What are the chances when we get to the town that we can buy a map of this general area. Are you going to ask that question in the ritual? No. <laughs> then who are you asking? <laughs> Have Beardy and uh, Task Rabbit been to this town? We're familiar with it. I've been to a lot of towns, so yes, I think we will be able to get a map. All right. Here's my thought for okay. questions two and three. If we can get a map of this area. Beardy has giant hands because he's a freaking giant humanoid. He is the brute squad. So uh, I have big hands. You know what they say about people with big hands? Yeah. They wear big they gloves. Big, they wear big gloves. Yeah. And when they <laughs> smack themselves, it hurts a lot. We can get a map and we can have Beardy put his hand down on part of the map and then ask in the ritual, is the treasure where Beardy's hand is? Right, and if it says yes, then we know roughly where that area is. And if it says no, the, the third question could be your hand on the other part of the map. Is it here? Yes or no? These are all fabulous ideas. Jason, Beard, Beard, Beardy's Beard, Beardy's very amazed that you're coming up with such wise. I'm not going to give you any guidance because you're asking the GM. I can't give you I, any hints. I think <laughs> as, as the group sorcerer, I think that we should go to the town first and see what we learn from the people. If there are people even still there, All and right. then and then decide on the questions that we ask. But we don't or, show nobody the map. We don't tell nobody about the map. No. No mention of a map. No. The other we question, won't talk about map. The other question I was thinking we could ask is if if are we actually looking for treasure? Because we still don't know what we're looking for. Well, it was rumored to have treasure in it that hadn't really been touched. Why that's why the old captain was was after it. Mm -hmm. Don't know if it's really treasure, though. Maybe the real treasure is friendship. That you make along the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. <clears throat> Let's go to town. Okay, so you're going to leave the cave without casting the ritual? Yes, I want a map. Okay. All right, just making sure. All right, so uh, and you're going east towards Port Nelson or west? East. East. You're going to go east? All right. We're the pirates of Eastwick. You could call yourselves that if you like. <laughs> All right. So uh, you make it about, mm, I want to say you're just before nightfall when you reach a point on the shoreline where Skaggs uh, is talking to the other pirate, uh, the other random pirate that you have with you still. And he stops and turns and he says, I, uh, Captain Jay, uh, here be where we leave the shore and cut through the jungle. If you want to get to Port Nelson overnight or if you want to take another two days going around the exterior of the island. I mean, I think we want to get there overnight, but we need to, like, make some torches to take with us. Okay. 
um, Skaggs orders the other pirate and Billy Knives to rummage through what supplies you still have left, and they manage to come up with three makeshift torches in addition to the ones that you already have. Okay. Let's go through the jungle. You're going to go through the night through the jungle? That sounds super safe. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds I mean, like I'm really- not walking, so I'm good with it. Let's do it. <laughs> Listen, sleeping on the beach is not safe. We know what's in the water. Yeah, no, I said that sounds super safe. That's why I'm saying that's all right. Did you not? Did you not hear Beardy? Beardy said. <laughs> okay, so you set for you set out into the jungle in the night, um, in the hopes that you don't get lost or turned astray or whatever. Um, I'm not going to force you to roll on that or anything like that. You march through the night. Uh, come dawn the next day, you're all exhausted and tired. But you can see in the distance um, fires rising up above the palm trees that you can see through uh, in the jungle coverage. So you know you're getting close to something, if nothing else. And by just before uh, full dawn, you step out of a, the edge of a clearing and you see Port Nelson, the tiny little uh, shipping town of Rum K in the distance down below you. Uh, It'll take you about another hour and a half to probably navigate safely down to the shoreline. But you have made it through the night. Um, I need everybody to test me toughness difficulty 10, though. Oh, man. We're not a tough group. I uh, I rolled a one. Oh. No. Okay. So because you're so exhausted because you've marched through the night, basically... Um, any tests that you make involving physical abilities will be uh, at minus two difficult or plus two difficulty. Sorry, okay. just f- for the, until you get uh, a proper rest. Just keep that in mind in case we have to start doing any rolls. Okay. Um, so you make it down into Port Nelson. Um, it's a tiny little shanty town. Not there's not a great deal of uh, of ostentation here. It's mostly palm frond type huts and stuff like that. Uh, sh- shacks are made of driftwood stacked together. There's a small jetty, um, lots of little tents and tarps that people are living in and out of. Um, there are two vessels uh, attached to the jetty. Um, one is, uh, what is it called? Or one is a longboat and the other one is a tartane. Um, that is all you can see right now. There you can see people milling around. Um no one really pays much attention to you uh, as you enter the port itself. Um, they're used to occasional visitors. Um, no one quite as unusual looking as your group, though, especially Beardy carrying Task Rabbit like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> or a backpack, I guess, is a more apt term, I suppose. <laughs> um, there's not a lot here to see or do. None of the buildings look particularly stand out ish or anything like that um so it's up to you guys what you choose to do here so the boats that we see just amongst our pirate knowledge how much do we think those boats are worth um well one of them is just an old long boat so you could probably pick that up for like 50 silver kind of thing it wouldn't uh you would think that, that would be what it would cost like in any in any major port it would cost you 50 silver um, the other ship, you'd probably be looking at a couple of thousand. Um, a Tartane isn't a large ship, but it's certainly not a uh, a minuscule ship either. Okay. When everybody level set their expectations, we're looking at the 50 silver ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a boat if it gives us where we want to go. What about your gold necklace? I mean, I, uh... What is it? I don't know. What? Who? <laughs> Who said anything about a necklace? Yes. What you talking about? Um, there is a small, um, like it looks like a vendor, maybe a street vendor or whatever, set up uh, on the jetty, um, selling random wares. You can't really tell from this distance. You'd have to go actually speak to them. I'd like to approach him and see if he's got any maps. Um, okay, as you get closer, um, you notice that it's actually a lady, uh, a very round lady. She's quite old, quite dirty. Uh, easily mistaken for either gender or any gender, honestly. Um, she's kind of like part of the furniture sort of thing. She sees you as you approach. She's like, "Hey, I, what? Uh, who be you? I don't, I don't recognize you. Where are you from?" 
We're from Captain, the seas. Yeah, I'm Captain J. Our uh, our ship was attacked on the way this direction. Ah, uh, attacked, eh? Aye, that happens here quite a bit. Do you uh, have any maps for sale to help us get our bearings on where we're at? We're at? Oh, I, I have a map of Rum K. Uh, I don't think I have anything else on hand, though. I think one of the locals actually gave me a map of it a few weeks ago. It has a few highlights on it, but nothing special. Are you lost? We are a little lost. So we were on a mission um, to visit the grave of my grandmother, who was a dear, oh. sweet lady who taught me everything about pirating. And where she's buried, there were three, like, little rock formations sticking out of the water. And she's buried in front of the third one. Have you seen anything like that around here? She kind of squints at you for a bit, and she thinks for a moment. And uh, while she's thinking, her hand flops out. Um, as if in uh, awaiting something. <laughs> pass a couple silver for my dear grandma okay so she she doesn't even look at the silver she just kind of quickly palms the palms them in her hand and uh you can see she's sort of you can kind of the way she's moving her hand you can tell she's counted them and they disappear um inside her inside her skirt and she says oh i i think i've heard of such a thing i uh the next island over though it's not on it's not on rum so you'd be wanting to go to the isle of yuma what can you tell me about that uh, that boat down there? Which? Uh, the long boat. The long boat. I, she's called Driftwood. She's mine. Quite fond of her. How fond of her? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, oh, probably 600 silver fond. Or like 60 silver fond. Oh, you're daft. No way. I would sell my own child for 60 silver before I sell that thing. I mean, I feel like one of your children would be like five silver. What do you think, Tass Rabbit? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've entered the slave trade. <laughs> but she just no. scoffs at you. The, the concept of 60 silver is just it's astronomically too low. She's like, I would never, I would never let Driftwood go for under 400. Mm. 80 gold, or 80 silver, sorry. <gasps> 80 silver. Silver. <laughs> Her silver. eyes widen for half a second. Silver. <laughs> Final no, offer. I, no, ma'am, I can sell you a couple of kegs strapped together for that. That's all you're going to get. Else I'd like to. I'd like to whisper to to Captain. You got to go up to 150. We could just build another raft and go to the next island. But I want to go now for my Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about 200? What about 100 silver and you lend her to us? Just to explore the next island and come back. Oh, I, I don't do rentals. No, I've you literally you came here saying that you were learning everything about piracy. I'm not renting anything to a pirate. No, I mean my grandma told me stories when I was. Oh, know. without stories, is it? Hey, that is from my grandma. Your grandma seems like a nice lady, but she's nowhere near here, and I need my boat. Well, I mean, she's buried near here. She's a sweet old lady. She's died. I just want to go pay my respects and come right back. Well, then you're going to have to pay more for me to get to pay your respects to Granny. All right. Between all of us, we have 150 silver. That's it. All to our name. Well, then welcome to Rum K. You live here now, my dear. <laughs> hey, what if we, uh, we can come back and steal the boat? <laughs> I'm hoping you're not saying that like that in front of her. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Thank you for your help, and uh, we'll we, find a way. We we'll, we'll pick up a couple torches if she has them. Oh, she'll send you. She'll yeah. She'll sell you a bundle of six torches for one silver. Sold. Does she does for she has a map. Does she has a map, right? You said she has a map of Rum K. Yeah, that's that. She'll sell you for ten silver. It's, it's Rum K. Yeah, we don't need that. Well. 
it's worth a look at. Can we see it before we buy it? <laughs> no, I I don't do that. Then how do we know there's, it's accurate? There's, there's, there's no try before you buy If it's not accurate and you find yourselves lost, come back here and I will reimburse you. Oh, that's be great. We're lost. Yeah, yeah. Come back here if you're lost. Wait a minute. That doesn't work. We're gonna be fucking wrong. <laughs> oh, he's a clever one. In the this middle one. for five silver. Fine, 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 fine. All right. So we got the map. We got the torches. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hunker down and make a plan. Yeah, okay. let's see who else is in this town. Oh, you could go see Juba. He's a cook. He he provides most of the meals. He has a small shack uh, down the road. It's the one with the fresh palm fronds. I like the sound of food. All right. We feast. All right. So yeah. you wandered. Oh, sorry. You want to no. say something? No. no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you wander down the beach um, uh, and you find eventually uh, this fresh palm frond uh, shack. Um, and there's a great big round fella uh, working away over a pot. Uh, he's uh, busy. He's got a cleaver, uh, Beardy, just so you know. Uh, his is his is very shiny. Oh. <laughs> oh. And he sees you all approaching and he looks up and he's like, oh, hey, hi, you need some food, do you? Mm. Yes. Very the much smell so. from the cook pot is is better than anything you guys have eaten in the last couple of days, for sure. Yeah, we'd all like a round of food and beverage. Oh, I no problem, not a problem at all. Have a seat, and there's a bunch of little makeshift stools all arrayed around the cook pot there that you can all sit on. Um, and he grabs some bowls and scoops up some stew out of the pot, and uh, even provides a little bit of terrible tasting grog. It's better than nothing <laughs> good enough and uh that'll be five silver for the lottie pay the man all right and while you're eating he he goes about cooking and he's like so what brings you here we don't get very many visitors to run k not a lot of tourism well we were on the way to visit the grave of my poor sweet grandma nanny we called her she raised all of us. I like. He elbow. looks at all of you and he's like, wow, yeah. <laughs> what a disparate bunch of children. <laughs> and uh, our ship was attacked. We lost our map. Now we're not quite sure how to find her grave. Ah, where'd she be buried? So it was on the map by like three rocks coming out of the, the water. And then right in front of that. Oh, hi. Those are the caves over on the Isle of Yuma. How do we get over there? By boat. <laughs> Our boat was sunk. How do we, how do we hire? Well, someone? I mean, you can't swim it. I can tell you that right now. Um, uh, you need a boat. Have you talked to Esperanza? She has an old long boat. She could sell you. She wants like 600 silver for that. Aye, it's a fair price for a long boat. Light on funds. If you really want to get her fired up, ask her if she'll sell you the uh, Starfly. That'll that'll get you a fight. What's that? Tis the Tartane, moored next to the dink, to the, next to the uh, longboat. How much is she asking for that? <laughs> she she won't sell you a Starfly. <laughs> Starfly is uh. how she gets around. That's all of her all of her belongings. That's where she lives. Does she ever uh, ferry people to the other island? No, no. She's a terrible sailor, actually. Just local, around the island here. She goes and she finds me starfish for me every once in a while. Okay. Uh, is there Captain, a Captain, maybe we should borrow that ship. I uh, wink, elbow wink, Beardy. Wink, wink, like, wink. I elbow and stomp on Beardy's foot, and I'm like, "Yes, let's talk to her about seeing if she'd arrange for a fee for borrowing that." <laughs> he, um, la he laughs. He laughs. He's overheard part of the conversation. He's just like, "There, there's no way she might she, she might sell you driftwood, 
If you're if you're if you're generous, you, there's no way you're gonna get Starfly away from the dock without her. Noted. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate the meal. <laughs> you're welcome. And if you end up stranded here, you're welcome to come and work for me. <laughs> um, my 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 friend would like to talk to your friend. <laughs> He's just looking at you with absolute confusion on his face. Like I, I, I'm here by myself. Yeah, I know. No, what's what's your friend's name? I just told you I'm here by myself, friend. Uh, why are you? He oh, looks at Captain. Not... He's like, is he? Is he a little daft? Is he? That's not your friend. That's not your friend. You're not friends with. I point to his. Uh... I point to Kevin, and I'm like, this is Kevin. Wink. The cleaver. Wink. The cleaver is your friend. Mm, Kevin. Kevin. This is Kevin. Sometimes it's a friend to us fair, all. Fair, well, fair enough. I mean, my cleaver is quite useful to me. I use it all the, I use it every day. I don't, mm. I haven't named, I haven't named it. Maybe you should. Uh, Beardy. It, tell, it tells you what its name is. What? No, I, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I I know. I, I'm telling him that his. Yes, I know. Kevin. Kevin. Yes, I. I'll. T Your friend's name is Travis. I think Travis is shy, Beardy. He Tra <laughs> Juba looks at his, this guy's name is Juba. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> he looks at his. Uh, he looks at his cleaver and he's like, Travis. You think? Ah, yeah. See, see. He's, he's very happy that you called him by his name for the first time. Okay. He, uh, Jube, he, puts, yeah. he puts the cleaver back down. And he, he looks at the rest of you and he's like, I'm a little afraid of this man. You Just should a little. Be. He's very large. Like the fourth time Jason's called you fat in this whole session. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a brute. He's very large. <laughs> You should be afraid. All right. Well, I we appreciate the job offer if we're stuck here. Um, I think we're gonna go talk amongst ourselves and decide what you know we should do. And we're not Fair gonna enough. steal that ship. <laughs> Beard, shut up. I sincerely hope you don't, sir. <laughs> it won't end well for anyone. Yeah. No, we're not gonna talk about that at all. Okay. Off you go then. All right. I'll tell Travis. He, I'll tell Travis you had to go. Thank you. What time of the day is it now? Uh, it's getting into the late afternoon now. Yeah. What if we made a little boom diversion instead of waiting till night? There's only two ships <laughs> on this whole island. Talking to a guy whose name is Old Gunpowder. Like maybe if we blow something up, what? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'll blow up anything you want, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not limited on on uh, <clears throat> on gunpowder. But yeah, I mean, what are you thinking? I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, you blow up her pretty ship, and while they're all trying to put the fire out, we take her small ship. But they're right next to each other. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, they're not right next to each other. Like one of the the Starfly is actually moored at the end of the dock, and. Uh, the driftwood is moored closer to shore because it's a long boat, so it's easier to get into from there. Those do. They wouldn't. There wouldn't be any collateral damage from like if. Well, I mean, depending on how much you decide to make the boom. Well, I mean, if I use the stink ball, which is one of the other ones I have, I could just gas it out. I oh, and she might think it's fire, and then we take the long boat and we get out. What do you guys think? I don't necessarily want to wait here. Like and lose another day. When 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 you say take the sh the longboat, you mean steal it, right? <laughs> yes, Spirity. I mean steal the boat. <laughs> okay. We're pirates. We steal things. Mm. Listen, okay. we tried to be nice, right? We tried to be nice to the lady. 
Mm -hmm. Offered the lady yeah. money for her boat. Mm -hmm. The lady is crazy. And she said Kevin looks stupid. So I heard that too. We're going to take her boat. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's take lady's boat. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Skags oh, and Billy Knives are like, it's piracy. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take Lady's boat. I want to oh. steal Lady's boat. <laughs> yes. Yes, Beardy. Let's steal Lady's boat. <laughs> okay. So when are you going to enact this clever plan? Now? I mean... Sure. Well, isn't she at her shop? Yeah, so she's got to run down there and check her boat. Oh, so you're talking about go down there. Put the, the smoke in. on there. She runs to check it, and while she's checking her boat, we take the other boat and get out. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in. Okay. So, uh, in the time it takes you to get ready to do all this, it's basically sunset kind of thing. Um, which is good because by the time you approach the uh, jetty, uh, Esperanza has actually taken down her shop and is nowhere to be seen. Oh, let's just take the boat then. You're just going to march down the jetty and grab the Starfly or the, or Driftwood? Driftwood. The Driftwood. Okay. Um, everybody give me, uh, what are we going to call this test? Oh, let's call it spirit, actually, just because it's a little bit on the sneaky, sneaky side of things. And I like that idea. Oh, Beardy is not sneaky. Big shock there. What do we have time to, to, to pass? Here, 11. 12? 12. Oh, it's difficulty 12 normally, yes. Okay. Um, 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, so old gunpowder is sneaking down there and he's thinking, okay, we're going to just do this and the rest of the pirates are following along with him and Skaggs and Billy Knives are there as well and they're clambering into Driftwood when Beardy comes stumbling down the dock just like making a giant nuisance of himself clomping everywhere because, you know, he's a brute. He's not sneaky. It's not his thing. Um, and of course he's carrying Task Rabbit, so Task Rabbit's like, stop just, just like, trying to whisper to him, like, oh my god, stop doing it. <laughs> you know. And Captain Jay is just trying to get around Beardy and bumping into things, and it's just impossible to get past him on the jetty. And you see a light flicker to life on the Starfly. Because I did mention that Esperanza lives on the Starfly. So <laughs> <laughs> are y'all gonna like hide or are you just gonna rush it or what? I mean, hide, hide, hide. No, no, hide. Oh. She's way down there. Let's just let's go. go. All right, Cap. We make a dash for it. 30. Yeah. Okay. So, everybody give me agility, difficulty 10. Can I just throw Task Rabbit? <laughs> yeah. Can. Okay. That's what I'm going to do to make sure the task driver gets gets where, where she's supposed to be. Okay. Does that so, give me plus anything on, on my... Well, you're, eight, you're just, you're just going to be the victim, so you don't have to roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Captain J, what'd you get? 19. Okay, so you're good. Gunpowder? 16. Okay, you're good. Beardy, test me presence to lob task rabbit. We're going to call it difficulty 12. Because... Uh, I got a third... I got 13. Okay. So before you even realize what's going on, Task Rabbit, Beardy reaches up, grabs you just above the waist, picks you up off of his shoulders, and lobs you like a sack of friggin' flour right over his head. You land in the boat with a pretty uncomfortable thud. I'm not going to give you any damage for it, but you're not feeling the best in the world right now. Your, uh, your peg leg is like whacked on the side of the rail. Um, the rest of the pirates all clamber in. Uh, Beardy now has to get into the boat, so you need to give me um, agility, I guess. We'll call it agility at, at 12. Uh, that's a 7. Okay. So Beardy comes stumbling down the dock. Every, um, Skaggs and Billy Knives are unmooring the boat. They're, they've thrown off the lines. 
Beardy strips at the last second, stumbles over the railing, hits the water, but the splash that he causes, causes actually gives the dinghy. Driftwood actually gets lift out of this and gets <laughs> underway a bit faster. Um, but you're leaving Beardy behind unless somebody can throw him a line. or I if throw you're... Beardy a line. Okay. So you toss Beardy a line, and you're basically dragging Beardy out. Um, uh, Billy, Knives, and uh, the other pirate have the, ro- have the oars in there heaving on them as fast as they can. And you hear Esperanza yelling at you from the dock. She's like, ah, oh, you're stealing my ship. What the hell's going she? And you see her pull out a flintlock. And she's going to take a shot at you while you flee. Oh. I would like to try and cast a spell on her so that she cannot see us any longer. Hey, I'll let you use your, um, your spiritual guardian to obscure her vision for that. So that'll be that. That'll be the use yeah. of that for for the day for you, because you have to rest to get that one back. Um, so this like ghostly image pops up in front of her, and she's momentarily startled, and she loses her aim and shoots the flintlock off into the sky. Um, you hear other people hollering from the dockside area as people come out of their little makeshift tents and stuff. But you guys are already heaving on the oars like crazy people, and you're putting enough distance between you and the dock itself. That unless they want to unmoor the starfly and get her underway, um, they're not going to be able to catch you. So you basically row out of the bay um, to the tune of Esperanza, calling you every explicit name possible for a human being, a pirate, or an animal, honestly. Um, but you get away, and you row off into the sunset. Mm. And I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for now. Um, you're underway to the Isle of Yuma, but we don't want to go too late here. Um, and that would take us probably another, I don't know, another hour or so to get to Yuma. So we'll call her there. So we might have to do a part two of this at some point. I would just like her to hear as the sun is setting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Me cackling as her ship is moving past. (laughs) (laughs) Insult to injury, is it? (laughs) Go big or go home. Yeah. Why not? You're a pirate. (laughs) All right, so yeah, um, I was worried that we might not get to the Isle of Yuma quite fast enough, but that's all right. I didn't, we'll, I didn't want to push it too fast. Well, we'll have to do a part two. Yeah, we'll maybe schedule a part two for a couple of weeks from now or something. And uh, I'm still in the water on the rope. Is that is that what? <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. they threw you a line. You can haul yourself onto the boat if you want, or they can haul you on. You can lead a beardy to a rope in water. The beardy has to pull themselves through the water to the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that sounds An about old right. pirate proverb. We'll encourage beardy to pull himself onto the boat. <laughs> well, you better because you don't have a ride otherwise. <laughs> I know. Well, you point. can't be drowning, beardy. Yeah. You're my you're faithful steed. <laughs> Ask Rabbit is moving faster than we've ever seen her move. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not walking been anywhere. Doing... Just. <laughs> I, all I can picture is like the Star Wars, like the Return of the Jedi, where like uh, Chewbacca has like R- uh, C-3PO on his back when they're in Cloud oh, City. Oh, when he's blown like, to pieces, yeah. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> what, what I picture. Uh, See, I was picturing because of the laziness, Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, that too. He's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Andre's got him on his back, and it's just like that's he's true. not telling him what to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, or Master Blaster on Sparta Town. That was the other. Yes, that one that's, the, yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Well, Jason, thank you for running this for us. Yeah, Jason, yeah. we'll have to we'll have to do part two here. Uh, we'll do probably. Uh, we'll have to see when everybody's available. If you enjoyed this session, and thank you to everybody that uh, joined us live or is watching this after the fact, if you'd like to see a part two, let me know in the comments, and uh, make sure to hit that like button down below. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll try to arrange a part two and uh, see if we can't figure out what this map leads to. The Isle of Yuma. So everybody remember, never tell Luke this was a great game. That's right. <laughs> he was in the chat well, earlier. Well, we just tell him like it was. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. It was all right. Faster, you know. it'd probably get better. Eh. Um. Again, I'll remind folks that uh, you can uh, find uh, Pirate Borg available online on most of the major re- uh, online retailers. Uh, it, it is available in distribution. Uh, 
really publishing uh, is putting it into uh, distribution. So if you have a friendly local game store and they don't carry Pirate Borg, make sure to ask them uh, to carry it. And if you'd like the special edition the uh, that uh, Mark is holding right there, you can actually go on uh, PirateBorg.com and uh, that you can order a copy it of the special ribbons. edition. It has two I think it's, ribbons. I think it's, I think it's, is, is it, it limited? Limited? I, I, think I, think it, I think I believe so. I'm yeah. pretty sure that I'm pretty sure you, it goes to both. Pirate, Pirate board. Oh yeah, I'm uh, sure. Um, yeah, you can you can get it either way. Um, if you order it from Free League, you're only going to get the uh, the second printing version. I don't think they have any of the limited edition. Yeah, PirateBorg.com brings you right to Limithron.com. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and if you Pirate join the Discord, think... you're going to get to talk to me a lot because I pretty much live there. <laughs> oh, and sign up for Limithron's newsletter. I yeah. am not a fan of newsletters. Every time someone tells me to subscribe to one, I don't like it. Luke puts out so much great content in his newsletters, for like free, free naps. Yeah. 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 Amazing. It's, it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Stuff. Very cool. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you to the crew of uh, our adventure. And uh, we'll absolutely uh, make sure to go to ch check out dirtywoods.net. And uh, if you'd like to see Pirate Borg, if you'd like to see more Pirate Borg on the show, let us know in the comments. And if you want to pick your, up your own Pirate Borg license, Dice Vaults, check out dirtywoods.net. All right. That's going to do it for this session. Remember, winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.